everybody. Hello. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, good night. It's been almost 24 hours since I've seen you. 23.6. 23.6. Yeah, Yeah. we're crazy. Out of control, we can't be stopped. Yeah. You can't stop us, you can only hope to contain us. You can only hope to contain us. Correct. And not many things can contain this, (laughs) for sure. Okay. Clothing. That's it. It's a challenge. Maybe it will be. Stretchy clothing. For sure. Sweatpants. So, today is a knocked conscious, I believe. Yes, sir. And uh, we're going to talk about a really weird topic that I came across an article that I shared with you. Yes, sir. Do you mind sharing with me what we're talking about today? Uh, I would love to. First cousin marriages. No, ladies and gentlemen, that is not a joke. Mr. Mark has been mentioning this to me probably three or four times now over the past three months or so that this is something that he has been wanting to discuss. So I finally uh, broke down and, and I read some research. I did some research. I read some research. I did some research, at, which he had already done. And I made some notes and he, he made excessively more notes than I did, which is shocking. The Virgo committee would be so impressed. They should be. And he's not a Virgo. So I'm like, whoa, whoa. I'm chaos. He's man. an honorary Virgo project manager of the day. Award. Nice. I'll take it. And because of that, he was presented with the special agent orange trophy, which Thank we will you. post on the Twitter, the Twitter, the Twitter, the Twitter gram, the Insta. Er. So let me ask you this check Mark. Yes. Why was this subject so interesting to you? Why did you want to do this for so long? Two things. Yes. Uh, you and I, we talk much about spirituality and faith and all this other stuff. We we do know something is there, right? Like we don't, there's things we can't explain yet. Regardless of whatever we can't explain, we'll attribute to spirituality. And faith in a higher power or whatever, totally cool. No problem. No issue with that because that I, it's my opinion that every faith or everybody's uh, relationship with a higher power is a direct relationship with that power. It's my opinion that we should not go through an intermediary such as a church or a religious organization because once men touch it, it gets ruined in my opinion. So what happened was it happens to be uh, we'll talk about it. It's generally in the Muslim faith and I'll, I'll refer to the specific verse in the Quran. Um, I don't want to disrespect anyone's faith and personal beliefs. It's not what I'm here for, but I want to shine light on this. And what it was, was I saw this article and what, and it stated that, uh, Pakistani childbirths accounted for 3% of the total births in the United Kingdom. Yet they accounted for 30% of the childbirth defects. So 3% of the births. We're responsible for 30% of the total birth defects in the country. And that's England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. That would be, yes, the United okay. Kingdom. Just so we can what, clarify. From what we're showing. And okay. what I'll do is I'll probably post this, the one article, or just the link to the one article okay. that it was. Okay. But we've um, referenced several articles, several documentaries, yes, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. So I would like to really quickly Bef- jump before in. Before we proceed. Yes. I-, I would like to reiterate one of your points. I would like to make this very clear from my perspective. I'm not attacking anyone's religion or anyone's faith. That anyone can believe whatever you want. And I've said in a previous podcast, if you want to worship Darth Vader, that's cool. That's great. What I want to present are the facts, the, the statistical references of percentages of this and the statistics of that, regardless of a religion, there's an issue going on that's affecting children and families and the, the, costs of medical resources in a country that are astronomical that are shocking and that has in my mind nothing to do with your faith the faith could be hey i'm from the church of darth vader it has in my mind nothing to do with that it has to do with the practice of marrying a first cousin and the genetic outcome of those children regardless of faith so again I do not 
want it to be the attack of the faith, of the religion, in, from from me specifically, Mexi Chris. Nor do I. Okay. And as long uh, as that's very clear to all the folks listening. To piggyback on that, yes, I would like to state that it it was a forty minute documentary or forty seven minutes, something like that. Yes, it took me like four hours to watch it because, to your point, I made as many meticulous notes to, from my understanding as I could because I we are not here to shit on anyone's belief or or anything. We are here to shine the light on facts and challenges that are outcome of this specific topic happens to be first cousin uh first cousins procreating yes sir because in my opinion it's child abuse i mean i've seen we'll talk about it obviously but it just that's what it is and we've we've talked about the catholic church with tyson and we've yeah. talked about michael jackson and and we've looked at both sides of that we're looking at this right we 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 just want to look on the side of justice or whatever, what whatever we want to call it, but we just want to look at it at its face. We do not want we want the third side of the story. Well, the, let's look at the truth. Let's right. let's try to be objective about it. Right. We I want mean, the third side of the story. Right. You've got three sides of every story. You've got their side, our side, and the middle. Right. The, the one. Yeah. The, the truth lies in that middle. That's what we're looking for. To your point. Of the course. Truth. Of course. So. Where would you like to begin? I'd like to read just. Really quickly, the um, the verse in the Quran okay. that it references. So I'm going to start with that because I just had to look that up because from my understanding, from the way the documentary was talking about, it was a Muslim faith thing that almost encourages first cousin relationships and things like that. And that is a religious, uh, you know, tenet almost. So it's that's where it starts, right? So the it's uh, ver, uh, chapter 4, verse 23 of the Quran. And it reads, it basically says prohibited to you for marriage are, and it lists a bunch of people, uh, mothers, daughters, sisters, fathers, sisters. And it goes through a list. The one thing that it does omit, and this is the where it comes down to it, is the first cousin. It does not omit like the father's brother's daughter, which is your first cousin. It does okay. not omit your father's sister's son, father's sister's daughter. Mother's brother's son, you know, et cetera, right? There's like eight of them, right? Which, you know, ways you can go. It does not prohibit that at all. And in, I did not go any deeper than just finding that first verse because that was the one that every other, everyone referenced. Okay. But their understanding is that it also encourages it as Muhammad, the prophet, uh, married, uh, I think, his father's sister, actually. So his father's he, sister, yeah, which That's is even a prohibited one. It's very interesting. That's what it stated oh, okay. something in here. That's, so I didn't know that. I'm not, you know, I once again, please, I'm, I don't want Let's, to miss. I'll, say something, but um, uh, I just, yes. So from what I saw, they they interviewed the iman. Is that correct? Like a, which is a priest or a, a rabbi. And he said that marrying the first cousin is not encouraged or discouraged. It's it just it's allowed, but it's not one way or the other. Yeah, it's and it's up to those the, the, those the people getting married. If you want to marry your first cousin, okay. If you don't, that's okay too. Right. That's the way that it was from from a Pakistani in the UK. That was what he stated that it's okay, but that it's okay if you don't. Right, but it does show in the. Specific, they I believe they specifically mentioned Pakistan and Bangladesh. Correct, correct, sir. And some Muslim, East African, and correct. Western or Middle East as well, obviously in that re region. Um, to that point, so I'm going to read this really quickly. Prophet Muhammad himself married cousins as he did with Zainab bint Jash, who was not only the daughter of Umaya, Umamai. Umayma, I'm, I apologize, Umayya bin Abd al Mutaflib, one of his father's sisters. So, so that's I apologize answer. for the butchering of the words. I am not good with reading names, and I apologize for that. But you should um, hear him say Frank Johnson. It's terrible. Yeah. It's I, not yeah. good. It's, it's terrible. Totally bad. Correct. <laughs> yes. Hang on. I'll get Frank oh for God. you. He's in the other room. 
I'm 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 from Thompson. That's, yes, that's Frank. <laughs> so that is the verse that everything, or that is the reference that we're going to go with. Just what's forbidden. Now, what's interesting, I will say this: they did other studies about the marriage portion of it. The marriage portion, I don't really have an issue with. Right? I really don't have an issue with two people getting married. I do have an issue with the potential genetic challenges with children, right? So what's interesting about what I saw was they looked at the divorce rate among like the average divorce rate and it was like 42%. In the UK. Yes. And then they looked at divorce rate among married cousins and it was only 20%. That's interesting. And it, and it is, and it makes sense, right? The Royal family. I mean, Egyptians mar- stayed within their family, right? They had some pretty crazy, genetic dysfunction by the time they had Tutankhamun and all those other... I didn't know that. Yeah, they all, they all, all inbred, I mean, in the, in their own way. But did, did they have genetic defects? Yes. As uh, they, I wasn't aware. Oh, yes. Okay. I mean, some died as in, in before 20, 15, 13, 8. Because I did, okay. Yeah, and, and it was crazy. It, okay. It was crazy. It's something to look at. And I'll definitely vet that if, if I'm incorrect. I'll obviously retract that and talk sure. about it another time. Yeah. But um, the royal family... Is all bloodlines. I mean, Meghan Markle was the greatest thing to come to the royal family because it was fresh blood, except for it was an Diana. American. Well, the American culture. Yeah. Well, she was still a duchess of something. But yeah, she was, was she outside? Well, she became duchess. Wasn't she a commoner? That's why she, everyone oh, loved her? It could be. I, I, and I could be I wrong. Diana, I mean, that was in the 80s yeah. and I just knew everybody loved her we'll because she was such a, she related to the common person. Yeah, she was um, very much a beloved character. Uh, a beloved person. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, let's get back to this. And I apologize for my jumbly flumbly, but, uh, so let me ask you this. We're just trying to be extra sensitive about our, our, we we'll look searching for the truth and we're not here to attack anyone, but it's something to look at. It's something that's very dangerous. Do you have a, a flow of this or can I ask some questions? No, go ahead and ask some questions. So of the first cousin marriages. Yeah. If 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 they do have children, what are the percent chances of the children having a birth defect or a a serious disease of some sort? It's like three times the average, but it's more specifically like this: if the first cousins share the same gen- recessive gene, which is the minor gene, right? Mm-hmm. That's the one. It has a twenty five percent chance of passing on. So it's a one in four chance if both cousins, the married cousin, the married couple have the same recessive gene. It's a 25% chance to carry it on to the next, to their child. So there's a 25% chance that each of their children will have a genetic medical disorder or a, a serious, I don't want to use the word illness, but. Oh, it's I mean, a disease. specifically called uh, genetic well, keep going, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, so there's a 25% chance that each child is going to have a serious genetic defect. I don't, I don't know right, yes, the right said, word. They spoke rare genetic disorders is, and, and, is the generic term that they use throughout this documentary. Now, the documentary or this, this piece that we're talking about is on YouTube, right? And it's called When Cousins Marry Genetic Disorder Documentary, Only Human. And that was produced by the BBC? I believe it was, yes. I believe it was the BBC, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it, it features a woman named Tazim Ahmad. And she was talking about... Um, she her, was like the host. Yeah, she sp- she's talking, and she started with talking about her grandparents. Of her grandparents' children, five daughters of first cousins died Wait, in childhood, so- and three sons were born deaf. So her grandparents... We're first cousins. That's correct. Okay, and can you repeat that again, please? Yes. Five daughters of the of the first cousins died in childhood, and three sons were born deaf. Deaf. Deaf, yeah. So what this is, though, so it's percentage of a percentage. Now, if they both have the recessive gene, it's 25%. The percent that they have that recessive gene, carry, that they have the same recessive gene, is a one in eight chance because remember it's grandparents, so it goes yeah, up a level. So it doubles. Right. So it goes from one in four to one in eight. Yeah. 
So they have a 12.5% chance that they share it. And if they do share it, a 25% chance. That it's going to be... That, that their have children rare will be genetic born. disorders. And then in, in addition to that, isn't there a chance that... Let's say that, let's say that okay, they have four kids. Mathematically speaking, mm-hmm. three of the kids will be perfect. Yeah. And th- but in they the- won't have the rare genetic disorder because somehow the recessive gene didn't get passed on from both sides, Correct. making it dominant, you know, that dominant. But that's piece, math right? only. That that may not be the case. Yeah. But mathematically, that it would be the case. That's mathematically. How- however, it's possible that one or two or three of those three kids that are that are perfectly physically healthy may be a carrier C- correct correct they so could carry if they could when they grow up and have kids they could pass that gene and they don't even know it right yeah it, is that a correct statement it, it is and basically that's how recessive genes work recessive genes don't generally rear their ugly head until both partners share it and it carries neck to the next one. That's when it go. That's when it like wakes up. And that's why, because we all have recessive genes, I right? Mean, to to some extent, my from my understanding, we all have like hair color, eye color, you know, all that are, stuff. Yeah, there's dominant and recessive genes all throughout. And, and isn't that makeup. why that people went to get blood tests for so long before they got married? Yeah, allegedly, allegedly, I didn't know that, but allegedly they got blood tests just to see that they didn't. Share they weren't something. related. Yeah. I mean, isn't, wasn't yeah. that, and that was done until recently, right? I mean, I think. I don't know much about that. I just heard that that was done. I don't, I don't ever remember there being a practice of that, but I was never in a wedding. So it wasn't like I wasn't, I wasn't. Um, a, a comedian that you don't like, I will not use his name, said he married a Southern girl in Georgia. And on the wedding certificate, it said, are you cousins? And he checked no, <laughs> and then they got married. So well, that's beautiful. Um, apparently, that's how you have to say that you're <laughs> not cousins by a check mark. By, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he made still. Hey, I'm not married. I'm what, not. What cousin. are the rules in the Czech Republic regarding cousin marriage? We fuck everything. Oh dear Lord God, I did not expect that answer. No, I don't think you did. Uh, <laughs> thank goodness we have a little levity while we get serious, Holy right? Poop check mark. So, well, this is exactly what you're talking about. The percentages are one in four, yet just one of these families had three in six. So that, we went from 25% to 50. That made me really, really sad. That was really hard to watch. That is where the child abuse came. So we're going to talk about I'm that sorry, really quickly. Child abuse? So in Bradford, yeah, I'll talk about, well, basically a child wailing is in pain that you can't help. Is That child is being abused just by being born. It's that's just your child. definition. Yes. Oh, that's not. No, it's not. It's it's not the not being cared for, but. And to possibly knowingly allowing that ability to happen is dangerous. I see your point, but I imagine a lot of people would disagree with your statement. I totally understand that. So, and, and so uh, we're, but, but more defenders of that. Of uh, yeah. There, I mean, there'd be a 50, 50 of you check mark, you're crazy or check mark. You're not, but to, to your, just to clarify this child that you're referring to is a 17 year old that is, who's blind and is going deaf and, really has a difficult time speaking and communicating at all. And and he has this obsession with driving because he's 17 and he can't drive. He's, he's blind. He will never have, never drive. He will never have a normal life. Now I look, and I get that. I don't, I don't want to be, I'm not talking about because he can't drive. He's abused. No, I'm talking about the cutaways to him lying on the floor constantly moaning wailing i i understand completely. that doesn't come from a peaceful calm place of course he's in pain all the time yeah i i understand it's dissonant and it was very moving it hurt it hurt to watch it was very i, I agree and watching the t- the two daughters that are going blind and losing sight and, daily and deaf, yeah that's the three of the six those Correct. are the three of the six and they have a seven-year-old and i'm getting worked up just talking about it man yeah, I, I kind of figured that we would yeah. when you wanted to do this. But it's good, though. I think it needs to be talked about because I don't think anyone knows about this because it was buried in some magazine, you know, in some newspaper. I never, I just came across it by accident. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. So yeah, of the three kids, uh, the two girls are about 11 and uh, 13. And then there's a seven year old that's completely physically without issue. And they asked her how, how, what's it like to be in a family where you see your sister's declining physically every day and it, just to watch her try to articulate how difficult it is to see her f- siblings suffering it was heartbreaking. And to double down on the abuse thing. And I, I'm, I, it definitely will be tempered. It definitely will not be like, I'm not trying to be like pounding the desk, rah, 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 call for their heads. I'm not, I'm not trying to be like that, but where I see it as abuse is that seven-year-old has to help care for those children yes. that are in pain when it, this could, the whole thing could have been avoided. So not only it, are the, the three children in absolute writhing pain and deteriorating daily, but the one healthy girl is burdened with helping care for those three children who can't even help for themselves. And she's like the youngest, the yeah. smallest. Her life is also... Completely I, I taken away from her. I don't want to say ruined, but it's but, taken away from her. Her yeah, childhood, yeah, is definitely not there. Correct. And don't get me wrong. I understand. I'm not trying to be bleeding heart and say, "Oh, woe is us." But things do happen. Like shit does happen. And, yeah. But this doesn't seem like shit that happens. This seems like shit that happened that could have been avoided. That's just my opinion of it. But I'm. I mean, what are your thoughts on that specific? Um, topic. <laughs> I agree with you that it's, I, I didn't think about it till, till just now, but if you have a 17 year old, they have six kids and I, I only know the ages of four. So if you have a 17 year old and he's mentally and physically challenged, then you have a 13 year old and you have a 10 year old and they're going through the same things. S- I'm trying to articulate my response to your question. So you have a 17 year old. He's 10 when your seven year old is born. So you as parents already know that your 10 year old son is not okay physically and mentally. He's having serious challenges. You've already been to the doctors hundreds of times, but yet you continue to have children. So do do, do you, I, I question I question everything and, and and that's not my place to do because I'm, I'm not a parent and I don't live in the UK. So I have no right to do that, but I'm, I'm, I try to find the logic and I struggle to find that if I don't even know if I answered your question. We have the right to question for humanity. This is not just a UK issue. It just happens to be really, large in the prevalent UK. right prevalent. yeah yeah yeah. first of all i'd like to just say that but secondly you said something about this so i'm i want to let you know that the possibility of people not knowing that first cousin children can have these things might still exist, right? There might be an, a quote unquote ignorance. And I don't mean ignorance as in they're deliberately ignoring it, but they just aren't informed. Well, most people know, Hey, I'm not supposed to marry my first cousin, but maybe they just don't know why they shouldn't. Right. And, and it's because of birth defects. Yeah. That could be just like, don't eat shellfish. Uh, don't eat cheese with meat, right? Like, it's right. Like if the, the cheese is green, don't eat it. Is yeah. that is that basically? That's not a good analogy. No, but like, don't eat shellfish, right? That's a whole you know part of the kosher eating lifestyle was a traditional thing oh, to help protect you. I didn't know that. Yeah, the tradition was to save your life. You're in the fucking desert. You're gonna eat shellfish that's been out for an hour or two without refrigeration back well, in the you day. Should cook You're it. gonna fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't but you know. Understand. Yeah, I, I didn't so they understand they, they ban shellfish, no cheese and meat combined. Co- the whole kosher. I didn't lifestyle understand that's what, is based that was on part of that. Okay. It was really designed to save your life. Okay, it was, it was a health thing. A lot of things in certain religious texts have value okay. in yeah. a historical sense, possibly, or in a Aesop's fable kind of way. Yeah, in the story of Job, for example, or you know, like. 
in this case, it would be to protect you, right? Survival. To help you, right? To help you live. Um, but to be clear, I don't know how new the generation is that they know that they, because right now they have genetic evidence that it is like this. I mean, they've got the numbers down now. When did they discover that? I don't know the year that they're like, okay, it's 12 and a half percent from the grandparents, 12, 25% of both of you have the recessive gene. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know when they ever did all those numbers. Yeah. But yet it's still, I understand now still, but I'm trying to bifurcate or separate. I understand the people who didn't, who unknowingly did this because it was their tradition right and had defects and didn't really understand and the newer generation that now we're talking about that continue that's continuing this the deniers it's like the it's like the anti-vaxxers the anti-maskers you know what i mean like same thing i, I right? don't no i don't i don't equate those at all well the anti-vaxxers they say oh don't vaccinate because the, the vaccines kill your kid right well these people are saying First cousin and children don't have defects. Okay, so let's go back to the family of six. Yes. Let so there's a 17 year old and a 13 year old that are both having issues. Two of the six. At a certain point, I would go, "Hey, honey, is maybe we shouldn't have any more kids, right. regardless of what it is." Like, right? If he, if if the, if the husband and wife sit down and have a conversation, and and they don't even realize that it's a first cousin issue. Okay, well, they go, maybe it's us. Maybe it's the water we're drinking. Maybe it's the lead paint on the walls or whatever it is. Who cares? But maybe we shouldn't have any more children because they, we could be damning our own children. That's not the right word. I apologize. Uh, cursing, whatever. I don't care. Hurting. Do you, do you see my point? Affecting. Yes. Um, to that point, though. Your negligence comment. Go. I'm going to guess that the documentary had an agenda that that first cousin and children are bad. Right. Cause it pointed out pretty much that side of it. Right. Right. And I'm trying to give the, I, I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt. Right. So my doubt is this, are the two other healthy children in that family of six older than the 17 year old? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Right. If they are, they could be three or they could be 22. Right. If they are, you're just like, Oh shit, we just had bad luck <laughs> two in a row. You can't have bad luck three times in a row. If you had two healthy and then had the 17 year old, then had the 13 year old that were not, I understand you're two and two and you don't think there's any, look, ego plays huge parts in this. Your faith plays a huge part. You're, you're encouraging this first cousin stuff anyway. So it's really hard. It's hard to get away from that. I, you and I are different, my friend. I understand your point. You and I are different. I, I, I'm not going to die know. on that hill, bro. But I do get your point. I, I would I look at it through the lens of you. Yes, I would actually probably do what they're talking about. That we'll get to that they 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 encourage, but it's still not done. You know. So, so in this documentary, it was what there were two counties or like territories in yeah, the UK counties, that were mentioned. Yeah. One was Bradford, and in Bradford, seventy five percent of Pakistanis marry the first cousins. 75%. And in uh, the other places, Birmingham, that's where there was a lot of the issues as well. But but both well, actually. Because Birmingham's had, a bigger city. Yes. Both had serious issues because Bradford was worse, I think, percentage wise or per capita. But Birmingham, 50% of Pakistanis marry the first cousins. And they're 10 times more likely to be born with a recessive gene disorder, genetic disorder. There it is. 10 times more likely. So. Parents told there was a risk but didn't believe it or just said that's not what happened. We've been doing this for generations. We've been marrying first cousins for generations. Recessive gene disorder in addition to we've mentioned blind and deaf. What 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 else is there? Well, it's it's basically just a rare genetic disorder of some sort, right? It could be an autoimmune disorder, it could be any kind of it might manifest itself in multiple different ways. So one was the 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 body didn't uh, absorb proteins. So no nutrition got to the brain. So that's where the blindness came and that's where 
the speech was lost and things like that. One was a different genetic disorder. So basically they're, they're using rare genetic disorders as like a- To cover many things? A, yeah, as a caveat for all of it. Kind Wasn't of one that term. they couldn't get rid of waste properly? Yeah, they couldn't get rid of waste. I had them written down, but I didn't want to butcher them as well. So It was a liver issue uh, and a yeah. kidney issue. I actually typed those out and then I deleted them because I didn't want to look like a, or sound, I'm sorry. I didn't want to sound like a moron <laughs> trying to speak them out. But one was like mitocopacopala or something. Well, yeah, well, I, I, I did else. put kidney failure in here. Yeah. So, and the one had to get a liver replacement, right? The kid, the one that yeah, worked at cash at, register. At a very, very young age. Yeah. The one like, that worked at cash register. Yeah, that had at like three. Coke bottle thick glasses yes, as correct. well. Right? Yeah. So, I and I and I didn't I try not to do names once again because it's not this isn't about I'm not trying to make this a personal bleeding heart story about this family, right? I am concerned about the issue as a whole. So what we have here, um so Birmingham was fifty percent Pakistani, once again, Bradford was seventy five percent and and ten times more likely to be born with recessive genetic disorder. And then this one, this one kills me. One in 10 will die in infancy or suffer a chronic disorder. 10%. 10%. That just, that just hurts, man. It doesn't that make seems, sense. I would really like to know what the, the rest of the country is. Do you remember the doctor? Well, do you remember the doctor? Well, remember the rest of the country seven makes up 70%, right? Cause the, the Pakistani made up 30% of the defects. Right. Okay, but so seventy okay, percent right. of rest of the That's country. Not, I just don't no, know what the number. My is. point is, how ten, many have this type of yeah, thing? Yeah, ten percent have a recessive. You said yeah. They're well. They're ten times more likely is, to have a recessive genetic disorder than than non children. So ten times. So what was the ten percent stat you just said? Um, one in ten will die in infancy or suffer a chronic okay, disorder. So ten percent would die in infancy or suffer a. No, 10% of the children born with a genetic, rare genetic disorder. Will die. Right. So it's, it's kind okay. of, it gets percentage of okay, percentage okay. again, Never right? Mind. I so got you. to clarify, I because, misunderstood. No, and I apologize. No, I was no, not clear because it makes it sound like one in 10 Pakistani born children will die in infancy. That is not what I meant. I apologize that that's on me. Um, so they're 10 times more likely to be born with a recessive genetic disorder of those one in 10 will die in infancy or suffer a chronic disorder. Okay, now I understand. Okay, and then there was a doctor that was on there, and he said there was a study done between 2004 and 2009. Genetic disorders in children of, it's cons, consanguineous, I, and I learned that for the first that's time. That's first cousin marriages. First cousin marriages. Consanguineous relationships rose from 17 to 21% in that five-year span. And the the majority of those, most of the first kinds of marriages are Pakistani, Bangladeshi, some Middle Eastern, and East African. They did throw Muslim in there in general because, once again, the Quran. But they were not other specific about any other countries. Or any other religions. Or any other religions, no. Or any other practices. But they did reference the, the British royalty. Yes. Uh, had first cousin marriages yeah, to preserve the bloodline. So it was done it, and that's the thing, right? You know, it's, it was a practice in the UK. Now, obviously they don't do it anymore in the Royal family. They're very specific about that. Yeah. But they did. So I don't know if you can reverse a precedence, but that doesn't make sense. Cause it sounds like we've progressed. Of course you can reverse a precedence. Right. It sounds like we move forward. We just, you don't. know what I mean? Yeah. We just stop. Like, I feel like that's what it is. But so many so many were like deniers, man. I mean, it's like the anti-vaxxers. They're they're just deniers. Like cl climate change deniers or any other deniers. Like no, it's not What first would happen cousins. if I was an anti-vaxxer? Would we break up? No, I don't know what you I don't know cuz it, it wouldn't affect you because you don't have children to get vaxxed. Okay, so only if it was a kid of mine that's an Well, yeah, okay. I mean if you stopped people from doing it like actively. Yeah. Like the abortion, like the guy who shoots the abortion clinic doctor. Yeah, like I would. The fucking I might sure shoot him with like a Nerf gun. <laughs> but <laughs> Dink, zing, zowie. <laughs> uh, but uh, so there it is. So 2008 report, one third of rare genetic disorders are British Pakistani, but they only constitute 1.5% of the total population. So 33% are have rare genetic disorders. 
British Pakistani, but they only make up 1.5% of the total population. That is staggering. Incredible. Yes, absolutely. If I mean, if this thing's not propaganda, that is staggering. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I mean, that is ridiculous. Now, this is these are questions I have. Maybe you can help me workshop this. Maybe we should get OJ in here, but no, nah, probably not. Not yet. Um, <laughs> the question, one of the questions I have is evolutionary speaking or biologically speaking is it just like is it 10 generations down the road where it really rears its ugly head you know the more it's done first cousin first cousin first cousin like if it's in your family tree or your family branch i guess you call or just family stump like what would you call because it? it's not really branches twig. out yeah twig there you go if it's on your branch if it's just your twig right um if it's always first cousin, is that like 10th, 20, 20 generations down the road is really where it hits? You know what I mean? Where the genetics get so similar that it really gets out of whack. Hence, instead of 25% of those, their children, 50% of them had it. Yeah, disorder. I see what you're saying. So it almost increases it. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and I think that is part of the genetics. I mean, I wish I had any kind of genetic understanding of that. I have a, an overall understanding that I... Th- the clo- if you stay close and continue, the- those odds go up. And I think that's where this challenge is. Like, they know it now. So branch branch out, people. You know? Branch out. Those children just looked in so much pain. Like, I, I was so moved by watching that. And I know that's what they, they did it for effect. But I, you know, blind, you know pain, liver transplant or kidney transplant, all that stuff. Crazy, man. So, yeah, I mean, so I'm to to point that out. And 70 published British scientific studies link cousin marriages led to an increased chance of rare genetic disorders, serious liver and kidney issues to your point. Yeah. Um British royal family, once again we spoke about that, and 800 year custom of the right. British royal family. Uh, I think it's an 800-year custom for the Pakistani people. I think it's a, I think oh. that's what it was. I think that's what they referenced. In my, I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But okay. it's my opinion that they said that first cousin marriages are 800 years, right? Because when did Muhammad... When, how old is Muhammad? Like, is he older than Jesus? Yeah. Is he? Y- yeah. Oh, he's older than Jesus. I think so. I don't know. I don't know all that stuff. I, I don't know that. I'm going to feign ignorance. But um, according to this, the first cousin marriages is an 800 year old tradition. And I, we I will leave it at that. I thought they implied it among Pakistani. Okay. People. Um, and then they had at least five research papers that indicate cousin marriages are on the rise and have been increasing for the last three decades. That was a big, when they said that, that it's been increasing for 30 years. That seems, that's when I thought, in, in the U.S., it was a you know I've been alive for more than three decades, so it was a common thing. You, you know, you don't marry your cousin. You you know this. This is a common thing, right? But I'm a, once again, I'm okay if the if they didn't know that that first cousin children had this kind of genetic effect, because really that's what it's about. Right. Once again, marry whoever the fuck you want. As long as they can consent to it. Right. I mean, that's why, of course, why you're not marrying like Fido. Right. Because the dog can't consent. But you would if you could, because you like Team Smushy Face. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's. But you know what I mean. That's weird. (laughs) Um, But it's consent. Right. So you and I would never get in the way of two people getting married. Yeah. We could say that's a little unique. We wouldn't think of that. It's the children part. It's the genetic disorder part. That's the problem. Well, so if they didn't know until at least ten, one decade ago, you know what I mean? But the, to your point that it's constantly risen. That's the issue. It should be on the decline. Correct. Right? It, it sh- now that this information's out. It should be on the rapid decline. Yes. It. I mean, is it... I know the Catholic faith goes, fluctuates, right? But of hasn't course. it been on, on like, wasn't there... There's points where it goes... 
and you know, where it just has a you, drop off. And boo, you meant down? Yeah, down. Okay. Boo. Yeah. Okay, down. Boop. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay. But it would make sense that whenever you see a, a case in the news, that it would go down. That would make sense to me. I don't know that for sure. Yeah. And, you know, we see this these kinds of things. But to your point, that it, it's been on the rise for the last 30 years is a little concerning because we do know now we have evidence, absolute concrete genetic evidence. You know, the math works. It's very straightforward on how it works. And they can show it to you on every scale and model, but that you'd still be okay with that. That concerns me. And it's specific that it's Pakistani. It's kind of odd, right? Like they haven't mentioned Afghan, Afghanistani, uh, Iraqi, Iranian. It's yeah. Any other, pa- they did mention Bangladesh. Yeah. But only, but to a lesser degree, to a lesser degree, uh, much lesser. Obviously it, it was very Pakistani heavy. Yes. So was it a hit piece? Maybe on the Pakistani as well. But if these numbers are correct, that's not a hit piece. That is a scary truth that we need to rectify. You would think so. Right? So I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. I think there's twofold. W- one is you're, you're the, the, the couples that are getting married and then are having, okay, I don't care if you get married. If you're procreating... You have a 25% chance of having a child or children that are going to develop severe mental and physical issues. Yeah. And that child is going to ha- have a very, very difficult, challenging life. B, the, and this is a horrible thing to say, the financial burden on the country because you're not going to pay for everything. You're you're gonna you're gonna have insurance, and or you're gonna have whatever the insurance uh, of the UK is. I'm sure they have some kind of tax, um, a taxpayer type. There's a healthcare system. healthcare plan. Thank yeah. you. We'll talk we'll talk about that as well. But oh, sorry, I'm no, no, sorry. No. Did I? You're not stepping at all. Please share. I, hopefully, I didn't jump the shark. Not at all. So, share your thoughts. So uh, there's a, there's a twofold argument. The first one is the most important one is that child is is going to have a rough go, and that's. So, so, if, so horrible. If it survives. True. If it survives infancy, like one in 10, I mean, if it gets past, if it can live past five. Correct. <laughs> and then, then the family, so three parts, the, the child, the family that's burdened, not only the parents, but the siblings, and then aunts and uncles that, that chip in to take care of, of the child. And Time. then tertiarily, the, 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 the healthcare system that is 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 going to be taxed because of the, the number of doctor visits and specialists that you're going to take this child to see over the course of that child's life and if that child lives to be 25 or 30 or whatever it is you're talking millions and millions of dollars yeah, that's like 11 billion oh, sure <laughs> uh, 11 goes, billion alex uh Law, me, ha ha ha, Trebek. <laughs> yeah, mother Trebek. Because <laughs> Keanu Reeves, 11 billion. So, yes, dollars go. Sorry. Uh, pounds. Pounds. I'm UK sorry. Pounds. Hashtags. Ha- pound hashtags. Signs. Number signs. Hashtags. Pound signs. So, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 it's, it's a multiple problem. It's not just. Yeah. I mean, the, it's the, like the, a snowball the, problem. Right. I mean, the, 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 the fact that the healthcare system in the country is going to be taxed is obviously the lesser of the problems, but it is still an issue for the entire country because the family is not the only one paying for the child's care. Beyond the money, the one thing you can't earn back is time. Absolutely. And that child, they even said, need constant supervision. Yeah, and care. So every yeah. second of someone's life. Yeah. I this isn't let's be clear i want to help people in need if there's someone in need i'm not saying neglect them of i just course. want to be clear i know of but course welcome to this world where I people love fucking just attacking you for saying something that just makes sense but they find some angle um i hate angles every second of someone else's life is robbed because you went in that direction 
someone's life. I'm Whether sorry. Like to your point, I aunt, uncle, sister, sibling, mother. I'm father. sorry. I didn't mean to burden you. Sure, you didn't, but yeah. you keep doing it. Thanks. I mean, and yeah, and it's not the child, obviously. Of course and not. And they're that child they're is innocent. Suffering. And that's the other point. They're all. That's why I consider that abuse. Just that that child exists in that pain when a child shouldn't have been born like that, or at least, obviously, to the normal uh, percentages of child defects. Right? Like things do happen. Some children are born with defects. It happens. Yeah. But, but if obviously you have this a chance, is so completely out of the whack of the standard average. Correct. It's crazy. It's like 60% of the time it happens every time. Whoa. It's fucking crazy. Sex Panther? Yeah. Well, I don't you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to your point, why First Cousins, right? Well, they talked about that too in the, in the documentary, right? They go along with it because family pressure. It's kind of like the dowry thing. There's a lot of not... They're not like Indian, but there's a lot of that traditional pushing of that family dynamic, right? That's always that family, family, family. Twenty only twenty percent of married cousins get divorced. That definitely speaks. That's half half the number. Yeah. So the that divorce rate's very low. Speaks highly to the whole family dynamic, and I understand keeping within the family in that way, but not children, not children, or. There are solutions. There are ways around it, right? Because they did talk about that a little bit. Uh, they have this thing. It's what is that thing called? The genetic counseling. I think was part of it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yes. So they can test for. So basically, what they do is they go in together and they test to see if they're compatible to have a child, and they can find an embryo and actually implant. Do I, you know, in in vitro, right? Mm -hmm. IVF, and implant a healthy embryo. Yes. Right now, they said it can test for only 40% of the recessive genes at the time when they when they did the documentary. Yeah. But that's 40% better. Right. That's and that's like an attempt. That's a, that's That increases the chances a lot. By a lot. Yeah. It, it, it almost halves, you know, somewhere between a third and a half. Correct. Uh, yeah. That number of defects. That's bravo. Congratulations. Yeah, of course. And And they can also do the counseling and say, you know what? You guys have this really powerful recessive gene, maybe adoption, maybe, you know, some other, you know, surrogate or some, I don't know. Right. Yeah. 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 It, I don't know what I can't speak to the faith or the religion or the book of the Quran and what it prohibits in like, you know, surrogacy or whatever. I can't, yeah, I can't talk to any of that, man. I'm sorry. I'm right. I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm a, I'm a fucking chimp who can barely sign his own name. Stop like, it. let's be honest. Type good. I, I type good. <laughs> and stuff. Um, but yeah, the genetic counseling thing was a great thing. But a lot of them just don't even want to do that. And it's like at that point, now you're just extremely negligent. And back to my point, it's abuse when you have all these knowledges of at least addressing it or trying to address it. But don't. Yep. I've always said, you know, Success is not in the result, but in the effort to get the result. Right? Like, you may not ever climb Mount Everest, but if you train and train and try every year and you just don't, you make it, yeah, you might make it an inch closer, you might make it an inch not closer to the next time. But if you try it and you try and you don't give up, that that's pretty successful to me. I agree. It's the effort. Do you want to talk about some of the positives of, of the first cousin marriages uh, of the, the, what the people that they interviewed and, um, yeah, let's talk about, it. I mean, I'd like you go, go, uh, uh the, take, take the wheel, sir. Er, so uh, I'll get on the jib sale. Or yes. The, the jib, yeah. Is it Due jib, east. Jib? There's shrimp over there. Uh, so pivot, the, pivot, the, <laughs> pivot. So there's quite a, there was, they interviewed, Several, um, several, I don't know, half a dozen married couples from youngsters all the way to some grandparent type folks. Then they were all first cousin married and they, they were saying that how much they liked that tradition because of the fact that the, the love, they kept using the word love and the bond within the family and how much they can rely upon each other and how, 
they didn't use the word faithful, but that's the perception that I got that they can, if they married somebody outside the family, they didn't think they could count on them if they needed something and how, how much they liked that, that family community where everybody gets together on the weekend and has a barbecue. That wasn't the word they used, but that's kind of the, the, the weekend gatherings were all the families there. And that wouldn't have been the same if they married outside of that, outside of the first cousin family. Uh, and they repeated that several times and it was really, I would say, I mean, it was touching the way that they portrayed that and how much value they put on family and how important that is to them. How, and it was really cool to see that. It was. And that, and that's why I wanted to start off with the marriage thing, right? I, I wanted to lead off that ha- oh, they get divorced half the, half the amount of time. Yeah. Just off the bat. Less that's than stuff. Ast- right. That's astonishing. That's amazing. But to your point, the family thing, the assimilation is so much easier. Oh, of course. They already share every family friend, every, they share all they're already connections to your point. And it just makes it stronger. Yeah. It, it's like they poured the concrete, right? And then they put the sealant. That's like the sealant was the marriage. And the concrete was all the family and all the other stuff once it's hard. And then they seal it up with the marriage and yeah. boom. And now it's like a set life all the time. And it is true. You know, once again, the prophet Muhammad married a cousin. And allegedly a father, sister, according to this website, I will put that website up so I can show where it's at. Right. Because I'm, once again, I am not a slanderous person. I'm not here to lie or make anything up. I am here to be as honest as we can be. I think um, a minute and a half ago when you said, I'm an idiot, you need to take that sound clip and put it on the board. I'm, I'm a chimp that can barely sign his own name. <laughs> no, you said, I am an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I am an idiot. And then you just play that, and then you play the dive horn. That's fantastic. Oh, 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 oh man. So, uh, I, oh, yeah, go To ahead. piggyback off that, I think there's, I was watching the documentary, and I, and I made the note, okay, there's, and they, they interviewed all those people, and to see that, the older lady, and she's probably pushing 70, and she was so lovely, and you could just see her, you know, I could just picture her in the backyard with all of her grandkids just, just having the greatest time. And then I thought to myself, well, did she, when she was 20 or 14 or whatever age she got married, I don't know. Did she really want to marry this guy? Did she even, was it an arranged marriage? Did she even know her? She was his, it was her cousin. Did she, did she live in Pakistan and he lived in the UK or vice versa? Was it arranged by the parents, the grandparents? You know, I don't know. These are all questions that popped in my head. So was it, did, did, were they young lovers? You know, Hey, I'm 50, I am 16 going on 70. Was it like that? Was it, or was it, was it young love or was it, Oh, you know what? I'm going to get married because it's tradition and I'll learn to love him. How, what's the, those are, those cousin marriages, where do, where do they fall? Yeah, are like, they, what's the range? What runs are they the arranged? Are they forced? Are they, Oh, I've always loved him. I've always loved her where, and I don't think we're ever going to know that, but those are the things. And, and then once those, all those things popped in my head and then they interviewed a woman who said, I don't remember what she said. And I, I apologize if I'm jumping ahead. Not at all. She said she used the word forced. Yes. And uh, she yeah, used, she left. She, she used, left or she never she never went onto the altar. She ended up not marrying him, right? She felt forced and then she backed out. She I used guess. the word emotional blackmail. Oh, yes, I have that written And her, 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 her fiancé's family went on a hunger strike because she refused to marry him. And then I don't remember what happened after that. And she, what she said when they went on the hunger strike, she used the word they were emotionally blackmailing me. Yeah, that term was used a few times. It was a couple times. That woman and there was the, another guy said it before that, and I was like, "Huh, oh, that's an interesting term." And then they used it again, and I thought, "Oh, is that a pro-? yeah?" Once again, I'm trying propaganda? to be I'm trying to be careful. Correct. Once again, of we, course. you and I, are do not have an agenda. We don't here. know. 
We do not have an agenda, first of all. We are coming into this seeing these statistics and being alarmed by them. Yeah. We are not going, this X thing is bad. Right. We're not doing that. How many of the marriages were, I truly love this man, I truly love this woman, I can't wait to marry them? Or And how many are... I think a number, and that's the thing is, remember, respectively, 50 and 75% of Pakistani cousins are married, or of... Of first yes. co- our first cousin, our fifty first cousin percent marriages. marriages of Pakistan are fifteen seventy five percent. That speaks to a culture. So that almost speaks to me to a. I don't. I hate to use the term grooming because it's used in child sex abuse. Right. But are gro- they? What are they groomed. expected? Right. They're are growing they expected up. Expected to marry their cousin. Eight hundred years ago, the first cousins got married. Right. And then they made their first cousins get married. Yeah. And they made them. Yeah. And now it's well, yeah. You two were you two took baths together. You two God, or whatever. Weird, I don't dude. know. I'm just I'm just saying. Oh, I know that sounds just odd, but man, it's not our culture. The problem isn't that. I I would never tell you who to love, man. Right. Cersei and fucking what's his face, Jamie, the Lannisters. Oh, I was like, what? The Lannisters Game Thrones, truly bro. loved each other, man. They did? Jamie did everything for that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw it through season three, okay. so. But, I mean, he just declared, like, he just, he declared his, his at, undying devotion to her. He loved her. It was his sister. Okay. Yeah, right. That's, okay. What? Spoil alert. That's fine. They love each other. I'm, once again, the love isn't the problem. Even share, share, expressing the love isn't a problem to me. Having a gene- having a child with that person is a problem to yeah, me. Yeah, and Joffrey was a dick. There, you those kids were not right. Some of those, <laughs> kids, <laughs> those kids weren't right, brother. But um, but you know what I'm saying when I say that, right? It's like it's it's at all we're and that's the problem. Like we're talk, we'll get to it. But do you outlaw first cousin marriages? Like, well, uh, you know, what I mean? well, that's, and I think we're going to jump that, but I, I think, I think we need to, f- to wrap it up, put a yes. bow on it, whatever yeah. about the how, emotional how many back, people, blackmail or well, no, but how of these marriages, let's say there's a thousand first cousin marriages last year in the UK. How many were truly loved that person? And how many were like, God, I don't really like this dude. You, you know, I think and you they can did ask it. that about almost every single relationship. Oh, fucking Christ. Okay. No I mean, let's shit. be honest. Can't you say that about, oh my God, my mom and dad wanted us, our families to get together with a dowry or this kind of shit, that kind of shit. We won't ever get that number. I mean, can we speculate? I would guess if 50 to 75% do it culturally in a location. Right. That however it happens, it's like a natural part of their whole existence from childhood and is there going to be a backlash not not just because of this data or data but because of the inner caribbean both of them all the pirates both of them both of the pirates or the island yes so because of the day and age that we are now and technology and the world is smaller and social media and blah 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 are these are these young people going to be saying yeah, um, I'm not marrying that bitch. I don't give a fuck. You well, can that, fuck off. Yeah, that the woman did. She ran. Right, but are, is that it's rare? Or right, is that is it increasing? Be, is yes. that going to increase because of? I will get. I I guarantee goddamn tea it. I, I apologize. Please finish the sen- Please finish no, your question it. because I I stepped on you no, and no, I I'm good. I need to be put in the corner. Put my nose in the corner Uh-oh. and put the hat on for time out for a second. Please finish your entire question, sir. Is that going to increase? Is the number of of young people that are supposed to marry their first cousin that are going to are going to say no? Is that number going to increase in the coming years? I would love to say no, but we just that statistic in this. If it's propaganda, it's propaganda. But if it's true, it's increased over the last thirty years, right? So it hasn't. Should it? Yes, because this thing was. Five years ago, six was it two thousand fourteen? Or I don't even know when the documentary was. Let's just say it, five it, to eight. Yeah, say five years ago. Just do a nice five, even sure. even, even odd number. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, yeah, that's crazy, right? But here it is: an a- an average children's hospital 
saw 20 to 30 different recessive genetic disorders over a decade. But in Bradford, one single hospital alone saw 165. One single hospital. So it's eight times. Eight times. There's your 10 times. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it's eight times in Bradford because only 75% of them. Remember, it's Bradford. <laughs> Only 75% of Pakistani, and then yes. it's 10 times of that number. Y- yeah. Sounds like it's right in line with that, too, right? I mean, it's almost, these numbers are they not line lying. Up. They, line they up. all fucking line up. Yeah. You know? And not trying to put a judgment on it, but I don't know if that's the best thing. I Can you say it's abuse without being judgy about it? Like, a child in pain that will never, ever feel calm or the lack of pain is... In constant abuse, under attack. I don't know what else to call it. Neglect. But they're caring for it. They should have never. Like it should never happen. Negligence because you because you got pregnant. But they wanted. It's not. They got pregnant. They wanted pregnancy. Like it's. It's. They know it. You know. There's a. There's an old. There's a quote that says uh, ignorance or I'm sorry, stupidity is the deliberate cultivation of ignorance. What that means is, and I hope I'm understanding it correctly, because I use that phrase a lot more than I probably should now, because I don't know what it means. But uh, what it means is, (laughs) if you, you know, if you turn your head, if you do the ostrich syndrome, you stick your head in the sand and ignore this, right? That's how a culture gets dumb. That's how stupidity happens. Because you're deliberately being ignorant to the facts, like deliberate cultivation of ignorance, right? You're actually turning your head. Very similar like when we talk about other religious groups like the Catholic Church that have tenets, right? You turn your head to the truth of what they did because you have such a... Because you're blind? Well, you're, you're, but you're making yourself blind. It's like a, because you're so locked into that faith. Because you're blindly following. Right, you're locked into that following that tenant that belief system whatever that system is like we talk we're in this time i see your point i got you we're in this time of covid right the covid all people are talking about is burning every system down right and the truth is every system does eventually get corrupt it's of course entertainment system has been corrupt the government system the private system the all Systems have been corrupted at some point and get corrupt. And that's why reform is necessary, right? That's why we need to change things. So turning your head over and over again to the facts that if you have a child with your first cousin and share that recessive gene, you have a one in four chance of giving that to your child. And what those consequences are, are death, pain, disfigurement, you know, not maturing, not having a, a lot life. of bad things. Yeah. Liver transplants. Right. And like I said, stupidity happens when you turn your head conscious, when you consciously turn your head. D- don't kid yourself. Germany was not dissimilar to that. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, do you think how many, how many Germans believe that there were concentration camps? Probably. I don't even know that number. I mean, I, my parents were just born at that time, so I can't, they probably didn't want to, they probably didn't want to recognize it. Think about it. Admit it. No, we would would never do such a thing. We're good people. You know what sucks about that? A lot of things. We we started this thing, right? It's called Knocked Conscious, right? It's about bringing things that are buried deep inside, whether it's a bias or a brainwash or a culture or a system, right? All these things, it's about bringing it to the forefront so we can look at it. When we do these subconscious things from how we're trained and grown and cultured, right? Like, you say yes, sir, just like that because you're dad. You, you can't help yourself. Fuck you. That's not a problem. <laughs> that, that's just it. I know. <laughs> I, you know I know. Yes, sir. Know. No, sir. No, ma'am. I know. You know but what, that's, and that's just a small, we're talking about the big issues. People are so scared to take what's buried back here to the front. But you and I can't not do that. Yeah, that's our. That's what we do. It hurt, and to our detriment. Like I, we, I, I know we are in con- constant. Not the right word. We're in a lot of pain, and 
we, it's on us. I'm not, I'm not playing a victim here. This, this, these are conscious acts that you and I do. We kind of accept this pain for a group of people. I don't know why, but we do it. We consciously do it, but we try to look behind these systems and bring it to the front. And some, there's so many people that I love that are just like, ah, it's not something I want to think about. Yeah. It's too hard. Yeah. Well, that happens all the time. Right. And I end up, it's too painful to think about. And I mumble to myself in the corner for hours. And in a weird way, like you shared something with me, I'll, I'll share it with Twitter world. Oh dear Jesus. No, you said like, thanks for the the podcast last night, yesterday. Share, share your story, man. You came in. I was, uh, I, I was not in a good place emotionally. Um, and it was, I was my last day of vacation too, man. I didn't even work yesterday. I, I didn't, I'm not even supposed to be I'm here. not even 37 days. <laughs> so I just was, um, personal family stuff got me down. Um, and it really ruined my day and that's messed up. It sh- shouldn't, it shouldn't, it, that stuff should not affect me like it does. And I have to figure that out, but that's not the point. Uh, sorry. And therapy. So, and I told that I got to Mark's house and uh, I was not, I was messed up and mentally, emotionally. I just was like, I was in a bad mood. Bad. I felt good. I was, I, I slept. I didn't drink. I, you know, I felt fine. I, and I, and then we did the beer Googles. But something was up. Yeah. That's I, all. I, I was That's not okay. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. And we did the beer Googles, which we'll, we'll release in a couple of weeks of the, uh, favorite movie villains of all time definitely doctor doctor laser yes laser and dark helmet so can't breathe in this thing and i told mark today when i got here <laughs> i'm surrounded that, by assholes that i i had to thank him because that two hour and 33 minute podcast totally snapped me out of it and put me in a good mood and i thanked him and i i said i owe you a debt of gratitude because that was exactly what i needed and i felt great you know, and I, and I, to your face, thank you. And I just called you out because I would like to return that thank you. I want to let everyone know we've we talk about how much we love each other, man. People have listened to this, and they're like, they the one thing, regardless of the topic, people are like, the interaction is what it is what makes it. Sure. And like yeah. I said, there's a mo- there's a song by Ben Rector called Old Friends, and you can't make old friends. Whoa. 28 years. 28 years. Up my ass. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no touching. Not there. No touching. No. But we d- we just know each other and and we hope we we hoped and we're we're very pleasantly surprised to know that that comes through when people listen to us. Yeah, absolutely, of course. That's the whole point. You know, it, Is that we're genuine, you know? Yeah. And that's what we want to share that always. And we, we talk once again, this is a knock to conscious, but we still make some pretty fucking shitty jokes and we curse. So we're explicit, but, um, our intent, first of all, if it's ever in a derogatory, any kind of way, our intent is humor. Will we miss the mark at some point? Every mark will be missed. Deutsch, <laughs> Wooder and check and me. All the marks, all the marks, all four of them are going to be missed oh, at some man. point. Multiple personality. However, The intent is always humor. And that's why we keep it conversational. We have not edited or cut out anything. Correct. Because when we say something that's incorrect or something that we need to correct right away, we just hit it right there. Oh, man, I'm going to pay for that. Yeah, right. right. That was bad. We we shouldn't say that. Don't don't (laughs) do that. Right. Don't touch it. No touching. Um, But that's what that's what's great about what we do, I think. Yeah, in my opinion. And I hate it's not to pat ourselves on the back, but. Like I said, people aren't willing to talk, to look at this because there's a couple more statistics I'm going to share, and you're just going to be like, "What the fuck?" But um, we bring we find these weird nuggets of things that no one knows about, and we want to. You can only make it better when you bring it to your conscious. If it's buried in the medulla oblongata, Colonel Sandals got a big medulla oblongata. Um, <laughs> but if we keep burying it back there, we'll never get better as a people. And in 2020, right now, there's a lot of medulla oblongata is going, like, it's like girls going wild, but medulla oblongata is going wild. 
That's a they're long, all like they're all flashing. It's a long Twitter thingy, dude. Everyone's medulla oblongata is flashing right now, and they're underage. They're all they, and they, but they Beach. signed a waiver. It's all crazy, but like they're burning down fucking buildings because they want to destroy systems. But destroying systems doesn't fix the problem. Reforming, yes, but you can't take away a system unless you have something whether it's beta tested or whatever, yeah. in its place. If you don't have another system, you have anarchy. Correct. You need something in its place to replace it. And I'm all for 100% replacement. But you can't just go from whatever it is now to zero. And I'm talking about all systems. Obviously, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to imply, obviously, everything. Like, the things we're talking about. I'm going to stay as general. I'm not even going to talk about I'm okay burning systems. down Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, that's... Not, not literally, but figuratively. No, like, uh, Escape from L.A. was just a really great movie. Snake Plissken, bro. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Snake Plissken. Call me Snake. Where's Meg Ryan? I just got... I fell off a boat <laughs> in the water. Was that Uncle yeah, Ron? Overboard. Captain, overboard. And then he was on Captain Ron with yes. Martin, Martin Short, was it? Correct. Fuck. And it makes me think about What About Bob, where he's sailing... And he's tied to the mast of a totally different movie. What about yeah, that? that's crazy. That's how our brain works. Um, but no, thank you for you have really put yourself out there for me and made yourself available for us to do this. Because I, I know you feel like I, I have a hard time doing it alone and you're there to support. But obviously, I, I know you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. But at the same point, like it's almost like we it's therapy for ourselves, for each other. In a weird in way, a we yes. In a weird way. So I'm just grateful to you. So thank you for allowing us to talk about some really heavy weird shit and then complete do a complete 365 49 22. Yeah. Dot seven. Know, really a 180. Whatever and it takes. Whatever. Or th- three left turns? Sure. Yeah, three left turns. Yeah. Yeah. A three point turn. Three left <laughs> All right, well, yeah. Actually, just two left turns, I guess, was all we need to do to go the other direction. So 180. But, uh, and then we do beer Googles, and we get, and we drink, and we look up the weirdest shit on the internet. Talk about the Joker. What's funny about that, too, if I may? Um, someone, I believe it was a woman named Ellie. I don't want to call her out. No, Kelly. Kelly, I think it was. Not K-E-L-L-Y, but K-E-L-L-I-E, because her name is Kelly, 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 Kelly. Uh, you knew that was coming. I friend. was waiting. Bated breath. Kelly, I believe it's K-E-L-L-I-E, and I had podcast recommendations. And I just asked for podcast recommendations generally. I responded and said, please check us out. Give us a listen. We have a wide range of things to which she responded. I just saw the 14 Shakespearean thing. That's right up my alley. Boom. And that's something that I love because we have such a diverse amount of stuff as Chris is chewing. His, because we love his Willie body. Shakespeare. Uh, and I guess, and what's great is we do have a core topic, an anchor topic, and then we go on tangents like this and then yeah. we get back to it. So back to the show. Um, may I rattle off just this, another statistic or two? That no. I, just to get this shit out. No, absolutely not. It's got to be rattled, bro. Rattle. Shake, oh, rattle, and roll. Shake, rattle, and roll. Make it happen. All right. Um, we Like I said, 25% chance to give recessive genetic disorder to children if with your first cousin. 12.5% chance that your first cousin has the same recessive gene as you. If it happens, many believe... This is one that kills me. I just read it again. If they do have a child of this, they just, like I said... They specifically mentioned we thought it was bad luck or God's will. Yeah, I wrote that down too. This is why human interference with your direct relationship with your higher power is dangerous because you're more than welcome to believe that personally. But I, it's my opinion that that should not be preached. You, the fact that someone would think that a child with mental and physical disabilities is God's will so that they can be on this earth to suffer, I, I don't, how do you, what the, uh, what? 
then you shouldn't do anything. Sit. The second you're an adult, when you turn 18 or whatever adulthood is in your country, sit in, sit crisscross apple stalls. <laughs> I, I almost said it. Do you see how we learn from this show? I almost said the other one. Need American style. Oh, I thought you were going to do crisscross will make you jump, jump. Jump, jump. I thought no, was... I was going to Native American style. I almost said the the other one, the, the really bad one. Um, Cleveland Indian style? Ye- well, I'm not, sir. That's still the team, bro. I, I know. but Go Tribe. Yeah, but we're, we're getting better, bro. We're getting better. You and I. Um, but crisscross applesauce. And... Let God take care of everything then. Like, don't work, do anything. Everything, that'll be God's will too, right? Feeding you. It's, it's the craziest thing. Thank you, God, for the food that we planted and plowed and grew and watered and cultivated and sowed and whatever. Thank you for that. But, you know, it's not your fault that the hurricane wiped out our crops this year. That was so just your was, will. God's will was the hurricane. Yeah, God, God was just throwing us the curveballs. He was jobing us, right? It's funny, Job's now a verb. <laughs> jobing.com arena. Remember when it was jobing.com? Oh, of course I do. It's terrible, uh, <laughs> terrible, terrible. Yeah, but Job, that's a, one of the parable, right? Is it a parable? Is that what it's called? No. I think it's a book a of lesson. the Bible, wasn't it? It is. Oh, it is the book of Job, yeah. So I, basically, God takes everything from him, makes him sick, and he stays with God, and then he gives him back everything. I don't even Find remember, dude. But basically, it's like but stay why with isn't God. It job. Yeah, I don't know because that's his name, Job. Like Gob. Remember Gob from Arrested Development? Oh man, no. Will Arnett. I am Job. I never watched that show, dude. <gasps> One of the best shows ever. Sir. I didn't like it. Okay, that's unfortunate. I just like the no touching scene. That. Yeah, no touching. I would never have guessed that you would not like that. I would think it would be right up your alley. Huh? That's okay. I did like a movie you so, recommended. You couldn't have. The Nines. Was that not liked a it. fucking great movie? I did movie? like that. Ryan Reynolds was Despite great Despite the man. fact that his eyes are too close, he's a sexy dude. Despite the fact of that and that... Um, the other lady? Got, well, no, it's got... Uh, Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, I know, but it's got Jenny McCarthy's cousin in it. It's Jenny McCarthy's cousin, that's how. Yeah. Yeah. Singled out Jenny McCarthy. Mass singer Jenny McCarthy. Melissa yeah. McCarthy is her cousin? Yes, sir. Get out of the city. No joke, sir. She has a pretty face. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she. she Let's she wrap does. it up. Okay, no, sorry. Uh, no, no. Um, Native American style. Oh, so, yeah. Why Once not God just provide adult, for you, right? Just like, don't do anything. Like we said is the whole point. Um, I happened to come across yesterday. I was in a weird mood yesterday too because, like, I came across some George for uh, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, and Mitch Hedberg comedy skit things, like little clips on YouTube. No idea how I got in that echo, echo chamber, but it just shot me in there, and I was kind of morose because I miss those guys. But one of the ones that Carlin did. They always thank God for winning the game. Good game. Yeah, you haven't won a game yet, but God, thank God. Thank God for that. They never say, he made me fucking fumble the ball. He doesn't like our team. You know, it's like, that is exactly the truth. You you lose, and it's not God, but Kurt Warner wins the Super Bowl, and it's thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Now, I guess we could interpret that differently. I'm waiting. Thank you for me having this faith in this thing for me to feel like I have a purpose in this life and can get through and overcome my obstacles and get from the Arena League to to National Football League to win a Super Bowl. I guess thank you, Jesus, is much easier if it's on a T-shirt. <laughs> so I guess that's... That's a lot of words. Right? Isn't it kind of like, like 11 font? Right? Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Like, because... I do, it is my opinion that many people's faith is what gives them the strength to do things, right? Or they, that perceived strength. And hey, perception's reality. If you feel like putting your left sock on in the morning instead, before your right sock gets you a bigger sale every day. Isn't that how you do it? Super. Which sock do you put on first? I think I go left, right. Me too. I think I do left, right. Motorcycle glove, left, always first. Yeah. 
Motor always. Because you're this is your dominant, right? So you're dominant? Yeah. Yeah. I bet you I bet you it's opposite for lefties. I bet I'll bet you dollars to donuts, just like we wear watches on the We're gonna get side. donuts? Um God, I love donuts. I'm not even gonna talk about my A one C or my blood sugar, sir. Why not? Because it, it was a number I don't <coughs> I don't know if I don't even know if it's calculable. <coughs> but I'm getting it under control. Is it over a hundred? It's over two hundred. What? Two ninety nine. What the hell, dude? A one C of eleven point three. And I was losing weight. I had no idea. I wasn't. I no idea. Crazy. I must have something going on with my pancreas. All right. Anyway, it's inflamed. <laughs> What's great about this is like tangents 3.0, 14.2, but this God's will thing, right? Let's go back to God's wills. Yeah. Really? Like I get using that as an excuse for your child to be deformed. It's like I can pass the buck to bad things so I don't have to take almost a personal accountability in a way. In this case, it's direct. Like sometimes it's weather, right? Oh, the, the tornado is God's will. Obviously you have no control over that, but you do have control over who you have chil- with whom you have children. So it shouldn't really be God's will or bad luck. But if, how, how, I'm not sure how to ask this question. The woman that said that, if she didn't marry her cousin and and her child was physically challenged, it would still be God's will. Correct. But the likelihood of her child being disabled would be greatly reduced by not marrying a first cousin. When you're able to account for every scientific variable that we currently know about which we currently know. Yeah. Physic, you know, whatever we know about physics, biology, yeah. physiology, all genetics, the sciences, all this. Once, if we can account for all of those variables on the science side, I accept God's will as a, I don't, I don't want to say an excuse, but I can see that as a coping mechanism, a valid response, a coping mechanism. Yes. A valid response as a coping mechanism, right. For an unexplained thing that happened. Right. Like if I were to Megzi, this is not happening. If I were to marry and have children with a Korean person, person from Korea, an Asian is descent. Is he hot? I would hope so. Not Megzi. She's not. She's ugly. Is he Don't hot? Worry. Oh, he, Oh, <laughs> now he is hey now, in my head Steven. now he's in my conscious Whoa. Um, so if that were to happen and then some genetic weird thing would happen like that would, the odds of us have the diversity in yeah. our genetics should because make for just, super just baby. to be clear you're not Korean correct I'm compl- I'm freaking pasty white boy northern European like 99 oh yeah you're German I forgot <laughs> the only thing it's not your Northern European, French, or German, or whatever, is like 0.2 percent of my. DNA. And that's Korean. Sure, long. It, can't, it has to be. It has to be some kind of African, right? Allegedly, um, or scientifically speaking. Yes. Once again, let's use science. But if you science. can account, if you, <laughs> I he blinded him by ignoring science. Yes, three three children were blinded by. They ignoring were blinded science. by science by the, the lack ignorance. of science. By defying science. Ignoring. Ignoring science. Ignorance, man. Stupidity is a deliberate cultivation of ignorance. But um, we were talking about, what the heck were we talking about, man? Your A1Cs. Being blind with science. Thomas Dolby. Oh, once you've accounted for every scientific variable, then we can go, okay, well, it's the unexplained. So that can be God's will because we don't know it yet. But once you know it, then it goes back, then it goes on the science side, right? Then it, that that science understanding keeps moving. That goalpost keeps moving. How many times have I used the analogy? And I'm sure everyone's annoyed by it. It's probably as annoying as the hashtag RQ, but it's go back in time. If you could go back in time with a, you know, a butane lighter in your hand and you made fire in front of someone who never made it and just only got it because it was there from a lightning storm or something. If you could just make fire, they would either worship you or they would they would stone you. They would kill you. There is no in between, right? Yes. <laughs> so what? 
that's why I feel like we start understanding what science is. So as the goalpost moves and we learn more things, like we're just still just scratching the quantum surface, right? Yeah. So as, as we learn more things, quote unquote, the pl- what I call the place from which everything came, you can call it God, creator, Joe. Whatever uh, word you want. Yahweh, whatever. Jesus, uh, whatever you want to call. Um, it's going to be understood. It's, it's just, it's that, that piece of the pie smaller. Maybe, maybe ghosts are real and we will understand what it is someday. Maybe we'll understand that it's the person who perceives it, you know, it's in their head, you know, who knows? It's a good point. We, we, or you know, it's just energy or whatever the hell, no, you know, residue. What, what if it's like this? I've never, we're really going on a tangent, but this, just popped in my head. Can we get a grant for this? Yes. They talk about haunted places. Yeah. What if the places that they, you know, the places you went were, had an energy of some sort that a percentage of humans perceived as reality. Like they had the antenna to receive whatever that energy is. Yeah. We talk about psychic power. There's really nothing there unless you're there to perceive it. Right, but my point is the energy is picked up by yeah a percentage of humans the person that's who there. then translate it as a ghost. Yes, or I understand. Whatever. There's no ghost there unless you perceive it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and maybe that's what it is. There's not. It's not actually a ghost thing. It's whatever the energy is. People interpreting it. Their brain interpreting it. Right. I've told you about having meditation and visions, and what the fuck? Yeah, like to a scary fucking extent. Like, oh, yeah, I see liquid gold. Like, what? I There's gold in my golden beer that's being poured in a gold li- ribbon glass. Oh, yeah, I just use liquid gold to dust the fucking coffee table that your foot's under. Here's the can. It's fucking weird, right? Weird. Yeah. So maybe it's just something, you know, like that, where it's not its own entity. It's whatever's there is perceived by a percentage of people that see it like a ghost. You know, and like, you know, we try to use our, our technology to like record it, but it's outside of our realm of understanding. So how could we use our technology to record it? You know, that's a very good point. You know, it's kind of like the Einstein quote, you know, the conscious, you know, no, no problem can be solved with the consciousness that was used to create it. No problem can be solved. Using the same consciousness consciousness that that was used used to to create create it. it. I like that. It's my, it's one of my favorite quotes and it's, it's so, it's so powerful, right? Like think about it We're we have a recycling problem or an oil problem, whatever. We can't think uh, my opinion. Once again, opinion people. Well, it's Einstein's opinion, right? But opinion people, we are using oil from the ground. We are using fossilized, melted fucking dinosaur dinosaurs. bones. And leaves. Okay. Everything. It's really weird. And poop. And poop. Doo doo. Poop. We're using all that to make our plastics. When we could grow a plant that almost grows in any condition and doesn't suffer any plight or anything, it doesn't need any GMOs, it doesn't need any pesticides. And we squeeze an oil out of that and use that to make the plastics. That's not a bad, it's a bio plastic, completely. Not fracked, not oil, not not like, you know, fracking oil based. Yeah. Not drilled, sucking out milkshake, um, but a bio plastic. We could, we can do it. But people get in the way. But there's no money in that. People get in the way. Well, yeah, we have to, we have to transfer the money from the oil company to the, to the new plant plastic company. Well, it's my opinion that the the hemp lobby would have to be much bigger than the oil, oil lobby. That's correct. Sir. Good luck. Well, they're, they we, had they're that, behind the curve. They don't have. They the would money. just have to be shifted over. Well, they'd have to. Do you think you can outspend an oil lobby? No, of course. Yeah, I mean, not right can, now. Right. No. I don't, and I don't even know if you. I don't know if you could unless that resource dries up. Dries up, and we have and, to shift that. And they don't have an alternate. Like they're Correct. trying the algae stuff and don't get me wrong. They're right. trying, they're trying other energies, but, yeah. 
but they have an idea how long they have the oil for, and they're feeling pretty comfortable with that number. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're feeling pretty good about that. Anyway, so that was an interesting, fun tangent. Three tangents down. <laughs> Negative two to go. Yeah. How many demerits do we get for that? Zero. Oh, beautiful. Um, but once again, God's will. Cra- I, it's tough to praise God for the hard work you do, and it pays off. Why would you? Like, it's your hard work. Congratulations. I'm not saying brag or there's still humility and, and understanding, but recognize that you felt like you needed to do something. You did something and it worked. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, it's best if I don't say anything. Uh, why not? Go say it. Talk to me, bro. Because Talk, I'm s- hold on. Talk to me, goose. <sighs> I know it's cool. It's cool. We'll do it without anger. We'll do it with words. Use your uh, words. That's the subject is very, very. <clears throat> I'm so opinionated about it because obviously uh, I was raised in a certain way, and I'm an atheist, and I don't. When someone says it's God's will, I, I don't. I don't buy that for a second. And once again, I don't want to attack someone's religion. That's that's the the woman that said that looked like a very nice person. I have a hard time grasping. I can't understand that. She and I are on very different pages, completely different wavelengths, because I cannot comprehend that thought. It's that simple. Agreed. Do, do, is, is that I, good enough? <laughs> well, the reason we can't comprehend it is because we faced ourselves with this dilemma for a, a lot of our life and, and really hard. Like we went hard to the paint with our, with our faith, like, or addressing what we believed or what we thought. What do you, I don't know what you mean. I'm saying we, you and I, the reason we're so passionate, whatever about this. And the reason we can't see it like this person is because we addressed whether we felt that was real or not very early on in our lives. I was 10. Right. That's early. Now I understand your point. Okay. You understood that you already questioned it back then. Yeah. So you already had the question before the answer was. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with that. Right. And I, I, I go your analogy that you used five years ago, dude, still rings true that I can't unsee the man behind the curtain. I, I, I just can't. And I would love to, I'd love to have something to believe in to that extent, regardless whether it was Jesus or Allah or, or whoever Jehovah, I don't care. I'd love to, I'd love to put my faith into a, a higher being and, and, and pray and find solace in that. I would love that. However, I just, I saw behind the curtain and I, my logic just runs rampant and when I when I hear a, a woman say that, or a person, not a woman, but a person says, "Oh, it's God's will that my son is mentally and physically challenged," I just think to myself, "Are you out of your fucking mind?" And that's not a nice thing to say, but that's the thought that pops in my head. Yeah, you you almost want to scream. How can you think that? Like, just it just seems so out of the realm of logic. But that, she and I come from very different places. Well, you do, but you. You also questioned early and somehow broke away from getting caught up in the same thing. What this person must have gotten caught up in. In an organized faith. Right. Of course. Right. Yeah. And and probably being a woman, because I think it was a woman that said it in this yes, in sir. this specific yes, documentary. Um, there's still a lot of misogyny and oh, being yeah. held down. So she was probably forced to go everywhere she went. She's probably watched like a hawk her whole life. You know, there are probably some other things going on. Uh, that are also cultural that they use yeah. religion to explain. And regardless really of if I was a man or a woman in, in the U S I could, if I, you know, in whatever 1989, when I left, when I moved out of the house, when I got out of high school, I could have done whatever I wanted. You know, we had that freedom regardless of your gender. Right. We did. Yeah. I mean, and that's the other thing is like when we go, going back to the documentary, one of the biggest thing is, any criticism of cousin marriages was seen as an attack on British Pakistani specifically. 
Which seems dumb. Like, well, hang on. Wait stating wait that first cousin marriages could lead to high risk, higher risk of birth defect is not pointing out a specific sect or group. How, wait a minute. Your, your, I, your point, sir, is totally valid. However, if we put ourselves in the shoes of the British Pakistanis. Who believe this vehemently. They like, hey. This is our faith. This is our culture. This is the way that we do things. And this is the way we've done things for 800 years. We're, you are attacking us because you're telling us that we shouldn't be doing the way that we do things. F you. I don't need to explain my art to you, Warren. Duh. Isn't that exactly what yeah. that is? Like, like who the yeah. hell are you to tell who me? Who the F are you even? To, w- yeah. to, uh, to run our shit. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. I, I, and I, you're right. In the shoe, as a person in that group. Right. You're attacking us. Absolutely. And this is why we're trying to come from this point of like a very just calm conversation. Let's just put it out there. What we're understanding to be right. We're trying not, we're doing our best not to judge anything. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm a proponent of the marriage. I'm the children thing is what, what genetically has been scientifically shown to be the bad part. So that's just like I said, what I'm what I'm coming across, right? So it's a major national health issue. British Pakistani are three times more likely to have a learning disability than the general public. Three times. So um that's not good for future generations, learning disabilities. Nope. If you can't read, how do you teach to read or how do you know whatever, right? So we talked about costs. You want to do you want to skirt about like what you think some of these costs would be? Because I took, took some uh, I didn't down. document that. I, I I know it's astronomical. About two hundred and fifty thousand hashtags per year to care for each child. That's two hundred fifty thousand pounds. Sorry, uh, it's a one point two or one point six. And I do we know one point what it is for the average exchange rate. British? I'm oh, sorry, the average UK children. No, but these, that's for this specific, for rare genetic disorders, it costs 250,000 250,000 on the average pounds per child, regardless of the, like, if they have a rare genetic disorder. Regardless of It's just of the their, Pakistani make up 30% of that, of those children that, ha, that cost 250,000. And Pakistanis make up 1.5% of, the, of population. the population. Right. So you imagine how quickly you can solve a problem like Maria. Uh, <laughs> how quickly you can solve this, this seemingly difficult challenge. I don't know what else to call it. I, I want to call it a problem. It's I'm trying not to be judging. It's a challenge. I'm trying not to judge. Uh, it's challenging for me not to find a judgment on this particular case because, once again, the child doesn't have consent whether it will be have a genetic defect or not. Right. And the greater the increase, if you can limit those as much as possible, do it. Once it's again, not fucking hard. The child is innocent. You know, why not have, why not do the family thing? Swap the cousins. Like, hey, you're, this is our family. These are like, we've been these together families. We've been family friends forever. Oh. They're kids. Like, do the flip flop. Flop flip. Flop flip. The flip flop. Put the sock on the right foot the first, <laughs> at first. First. Yeah. Before you put it on the left. Just change it up. That's Just, actually not a bad bring idea. Bring in the lefty. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> call up to the call down to the bullpen and be like, let's warm up, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. So where it now, this is one of the other phrases. This is, this is where it gets me. We talk, we're talking about systems. You and I, the things we've talked about are, yes, we've talked about the Catholic church. We talked about this. It's not just religious systems. How many things have we talked about? We talked about the entertainment system with Michael Jackson. Yeah. So the this is we are not on some single singular agenda vendetta. No. No agenda vendetta. <laughs> Isn't that that's oh my god, is that like regatta mandata? Sure. It's like the police song. Agenda vent agenda vent Indico Mandata. Agenda Vendetta. Yes. Agenda Vendetta. Say that five times real no. fast. So we're not on that, but here's a phrase. So the woman spoke to a priest or a Iman. Iman. And presented this information to him. Yes. And she's like, you don't see a problem with whatever, <laughs> you know, here's the paperwork. Or he, she's talking with him about it, asking to, to give him the paperwork or whatever. Yeah. Would you find a problem? If, if it does show this information to you, would you change your mind? 
And he goes, Islamically, I do not see an issue with marrying your first cousin. Islamically, I do not see. So we're not talking genetically, which is the actual effect of the child in this world. Unfortunately, that's all we can do, bro, is have chemistry and have a baby like physically. Right. So Islamically shouldn't matter. Physically should matter. But Islamically, I do not see an issue with marrying your first cousin. Now, I'm they're implying that you're going to have children. Of course. After marriage, right? Because yeah. marrying obviously doesn't have an if effect on anything. Um, and then the woman said, maybe not, maybe not Islamically, but medically there's a problem. Don't you see that? Like, yeah, medically there is a problem, right? Islamically speaking, once again, not a problem with the faith or whatever. Well, this could believe. be any religion. But... It could be Jewish or right. Catholic or... Right, it could be anything. It's Correct. not... I, this is not specific. It's just... It's just dogma related Co- well, in yeah. general. And dogma, yes, it's kind of with the Catholic Church, but dogma is general across the board as kind but of this some could be tactic. any sect. Correct. It can be anything. It could be this. It could be the Hail Satan guys. It could be the yeah, Satanic totally. whatever. They could... That could happen. They could marry their cousins. We don't know. Maybe, maybe they like I gotta that. call them. We should, we should give them a quick uh, ring-a-ling-a-ling. Yeah, Islamically, I don't see an issue. And I, and I... And I understand that, but you do know medically, like there's, it's not like Islamically and you don't have a medical document to contradict it. Right. That's my point about like when science does show up. There is evidence. Where the goalpost has to move. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So that's what it is. But the genetic counseling thing seems to be like a good workaround. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. But people are, you know, are not doing that. So I don't, I. Question: I wonder if they force genetic counseling and pay for that instead of paying for the child care. I wonder if the genetic counseling might cost less than having to deal with the child after it's born and for the rest of his you life. You would think so. Right? I wonder. I, I they mean, didn't get into that. That seems obvious to me. Yeah, but maybe it doesn't. Who knows? And maybe there's other lobbyists. Maybe care. You remember, you got the the more children are sick, the more pills are taken. The more hospital rooms are filled. We are a capitalist society, and that's a challenge at times. To your uh, to your point there about the number of pills, um, that the one boy that was 18 that acted like he was 14 that had a liver transplant when he was very, very young, at like three or something, um, he's taking a boatload of prescription drugs just to regulate his liver, and he has several other problems, eyesight, and he has some bone issues in his hands and his arms. Um, he was he his was taking, left arm is degenerating. Quickly. Yeah, correct. Different than the other one, and one leg's doing something different than the left leg. Um, and he's he was taking eleven different prescriptions at one time, several times a day. So I thought, okay, I didn't even think about the monetary point. But what I thought is, what is the side effect of those drugs themselves? Because every commercial you see. Try Tambien. Tambien causes anal leakage and Tooting. bloody earlobes. <laughs> if you experience death, please stop taking Tambien right away and call your doctor. You know, so yeah. this poor 18-year-old kid is taking at least 11 different prescription drugs. What are the side effects of those drugs themselves? We have we have no idea. Yeah. And I'd be willing to bet that because he has a genetic disorder, some of those drugs are borderline experimental so they don't even For know sure. the side effects right that's to me is almost as terrifying as the disease itself and you're giving it to them yeah and he's taking them yeah what, what was the one didn't bill gates immunize some kids in africa or something they all got sick or something that what? was vaccines right yeah wasn't that some kind of weird vaccine they gave yeah them and they killed them all like not all i don't know if killed yeah them all, but y- yes there was something bad happened yes that is correct boom there you go right there but that was a vaccine and these are prescription drugs. No, the vaccines still need to be tested in yeah. some way, right? So it's I, the same thing guessing. as prescription drugs that you have to push through and are experimental. I, I, uh, I'm guessing that some of them are, are experimental because... They have to be. They, these these are such rare things. They keep coming up with new types of conditions. Right. It's so They're so niche. It's almost like they, there's as many rare genetic disorders as there are podcasts nowadays. Whoa. Whoa, right? Um, no, but yeah, to your point, it's crazy. Um, the, the, there was a, there was a, a Caucasian couple in the UK they interviewed and they had a child that passed away who had a genetic disorder 
and they were cousins, but they didn't know they were cousins. Was that, was that, do you remember that part? I can't speak to that. I was so focused on trying to get the information correct. All right. We'll we'll skip over that. But maybe we can touch back on it on the next Okay, podcast. I'll that's fine. Watch it again or something, because maybe I can just watch and try to. I don't know if enjoy it's the right word. No, it was. I don't know if I can watch that again. I was tortured. Okay, we'll skip that part. Um, yeah. So, no, what, I'm sorry. They were second cousins. <laughs> they were second cousins, and uh, they uh, they had a child that passed away, and they um, but they knew they were second cousins. I apologize. That's okay. what I, I I forgot that note that I jotted down. Hmm. They knew. Okay, so they knew they were. Now, I've heard that second cousins was okay. Is that the kissing cousins term? I don't know. I don't think first cousins is a kissing cousins. Is I it? don't know. I've seen that term, but I don't know what that yeah. means. I probably have to look that up or something. Nah. But but basically, I I my understanding was the genetic pool is much clearer second cousin and on. Yes. Because it's your first cousin's kid? First cousin's child? Is that your second cousin? So you have an older cousin by 20 years, for example. Then they have a child. Yes. That person is your second cousin. Correct. Okay, right. Yeah, so that's possible. It could happen. Because I have, you know, you have a lot of older cousins and whatnot. Yeah. You know, so second cousin. But I heard that's a little cleaner part of the genetic pool. Yeah, that was always not frowned upon. Right. It was cockeyed. Like, hmm, Okay. It was kind of like that. Right. It wasn't like studied too closely, yeah. but you it was sure a little. You want to do that? Yeah, it's you like freaking weirdo. You, you guys really couldn't find someone else? Like, it's kind of almost like There's that. There's 7 almost billion like people big. in the world. Well, back then there were. Okay. 8 billion. Th- eight, 83. 83 people. People, yeah. Okay. Total. In the UK. Just right there. Yeah, right smack dab in the middle of Piccadilly. I have no idea. Whatever is it, it is takes. Is that a thing? Piccadilly? Piccadilly Square, Piccadilly right? Square? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Owned by the Queen. Because I read that article you sent me. <laughs> 39 things that you didn't know she has? Yes. Oh, man. I don't know if we're going to do that one, man. That is that is a long freaking list. We can skip some of them because they're dumb. That's true. Some of them. She owns the beach. She owns the dolphins. water. Dolphins. Every dolphin in the United shit? Kingdom. Let's move along. I do want to go over the dolphins because... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Flipper. I think I have that one. That that one in there somewhere i'll have to pull it because of the most annoying <laughs> sounds <laughs> in the world yes but it was just a joke i think i just added the dog <laughs> but what i found interesting was at the bottom of that article the first article that i talked about about the three uh, percent of the burst but 30 percent of the defects there's the op-ed piece where people can leave comments yeah and some person left a really long comment i'm not doxing him i don't remember the name i'm not even going to go into specific and quote but basically they're like defending Defending this at face value, like, a lot, well, genetic defects happen. Yeah, but not at the rate. Like, none of the arguments or the defense made any sense in line with it. And that's just blind, ign- it's, it's deliberate ignorance. And it equals the other thing I talk about. I don't want to call anyone that word. I don't want to call anyone dumb or anything. But the deliberate cultivation of ignorance. It, But everybody has defects. No. No. Yes. Yeah. Point zero 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 one versus ten times or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just it. It's frustrating. Yeah. I, yes, I would agree. How does one address a singular a singular issue like this? How does one separate it from the con, from everyone conflating it with religion? Just because Muhammad had a cousin that he married, that like that has to happen. Then it becomes a caliphate or whatever. What's that thing, right? Like I don't know that word. A statement. Well, basically, it's like a like a. It's almost like a almost like a commandment in a weird way. Oh, okay. Almost kind of. But it's like that's okay now. But is it like now that we know this? I'm not attacking the person's faith because genetically speaking, that child's gonna could potentially be not so good. So you're asking, how do you tackle the problem? Yeah. So, um, how do you speak with people whose faith? I won't, I I only say it this way, like demands that first cousin, right. 
is offended that you bring up that first cousin shouldn't be married. Right. Let's do it that way of because course. maybe not everyone will do it. Right. But, but if you that can you're not cut offended it by it, right? By a big percentage. Correct. Yeah. How does one just say, look, you have a whole community of people from whom you can choose. Hey, Mary White Girl. Yeah. Convert. You'll get more people. Convert, like get yeah. people into your, you know, yeah. grow, grow that way. That's actually a good idea. Yeah. Um, to your question, there was two points in the documentary that I that I jotted down. One, the government is not approaching it at the level of the country, but they're approaching it couple by couple with the genetic testing and counseling, as you mentioned. Second, um, the doctors are going and they're trying to get the help of the clergy. And there was one Iman that that um gave us gave a talk with with the members of his clergy that I'm sorry with the members of his mosque um uh, about first couple of marriages and the statistics of first cousin marriages um, yes I'm sorry first cousin marriages and the statistics of um birth defects and birth rates that were issues etc so I don't think that's a bad approach of having non-government officials having medical professionals talking to members of the clergy of this group of people and and saying hey look we want you guys to be healthy. You know, we want, we, we're on the same team. We don't want to be combative. We want to, we want the best outcome, right? Yeah. And I love that. How I would look at it to your question is that maybe, I don't want to say you give, give out flyers, but maybe you, you this is dumb, set up a Facebook group and say, hey, you know, this is the, these are the rates of, Genetic disorders, if you marry your first cousin, you know, we understand that this is a long tradition. We respect your, your culture. However, these are the things that could happen to your children. And to a greater extent than the average by a large, by a noticeable margin. This, this is what's going to affect. It is a risk. It makes it a risk. Yes. But this is, this is what could happen to your child, your children. This is the effect that's going to have on you. Your legacy. Correct. This is what's going to have the effect on the children that you may have that are healthy. The domino effect on the entire family. Your family of the future. Because yeah. that child can't procreate, can't have children. Right. Because it wouldn't be able to care for children. Wouldn't know how to. I mean, I would think yeah. how that would be possible. Right. So do you right. do you have a, do you have a grassroots movement in the community to go out and like I said, I don't want to say hand out flyers, but get people like they, they, the, the producer of the show, she talked to some younger Pakistani folks that were like, this is no, we don't want to marry our first cousins. Absolutely not. Yeah. So you get people like that, that are in the community that are already on that frame of mind that know that this is, this this is not in the best interest of the community's health, and and tackle it from that perspective. Yeah, because um, if the government goes in and goes, no more of this, you're 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 going to lose. Right, you're screwed. Well, what's really hard about that is, um, even if I disagreed with it, what makes me an activist? Why would I want to like? Where's my skin in the game to give a shit about what they do? You mean one of the youngsters I yeah, mentioned? Yeah, like where's their motivation to do it other than thinking it? Like, you so have they to don't be get pretty, forced into a first cousin marriage. Well, you're not forced, but they just disagree with it, right? They, they, all I'm saying is they disagree with a first cousin marriage, right? Yeah. But there's a very huge gap between not agreeing with it and being an activist to like protest it, right? They have to bridge that gap. I'm, I'm curious about that, the, that generation. Yeah, yeah I, it's a very good point. How much motivation the generation is, or how motivated the generation is, yeah, to not only not agree with it themselves, which is once again f- good, but how to help their community, you know, be you know, bring it to the community because that takes effort. It takes effort. It's easy for yourself to just say I won't do it, but like to to speak on it and go on rallies and to do all that it takes time, it takes energy, it takes effort, right? So, Absolutely. I don't know. Just a thought. But, um, yeah. The, and to your point. So I love that the one-on-one, they had this, it was like, it's almost like they were using an algorithm of some sort to find the best candidates to have these one-on-one conversations, right? These counseling sessions where they find you individually 
And I thought that was a really good way to tackle this problem, to your point. Yeah. Because I think you can change, you can at least open someone's eyes a little better. And if they can, if that person tells a person or tells two, right. you get the Amway effect. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? It is a really good way to do that, too. So then we get to this point, though. This is where it gets interesting. You and I live in the United States. We live in America. We always talk about our, you know, Constitution, Bill of Rights, all our freedoms and all that stuff. Yes. Would outlawing first cousin marriages um, be okay? Is that acceptable? Because by outlawing it, they will have children with non-first cousins and solve the problem that directly. Are there laws in the U.S. that already state that? There are laws against marriage when it regards to, with regards to consent. So, like, you can't marry an animal, for example. Well, I know. I know. <laughs> but once... Well, I'm using that as a simple thing, just as, as, a, as a piece to say, an animal can't consent. Just like you can't marry a child under 18. 18 was my next comment. Okay. Right. So it was in addition to that. Okay. But is to... it, we don't know if there's a law in any state that says you cannot marry your cousin. I don't believe there is a law okay. prohibiting. Now, allegedly there are countries that haven't. I did not look a list of those. I didn't want to get, I wanted to talk philosophically okay. about this. To answer your question. Yes. I believe there should be a law that says you're not allowed to marry your first fucking cousin. What do you think? I'm really torn. Because I'm such an individual freedom person with my responsibility. I know if Megzi was my cousin and I were to marry her and we wanted to have children. I thought you were marrying a Korean dude. <laughs> are you going to be, are you going to no. have two, a no. husband and a wife? It's called a menage. Okay. Jeff. <laughs> um, no, but uh, <laughs> so where was I now? You're oh. gonna you're gonna marry so Megzi, Megzi, who's not your cousin. Megzi's my first cousin. And oh, we yeah, get she married is. and we consider having children. We go, all right, let's take a test already. Okay, if there's any any recessive gene that we share, right off the table, we've got adoption, we've got IVF, we've got all these different ways to tackle it. We would be responsible in doing that. I would expect or hope that everyone else would be responsible in doing that. However, they wouldn't. That's, of course not. Well, welcome to uh, pound uh, dollar humanity. sign. Humanity. Yeah. Pound sign humanity. <laughs> right? Like. Duh. No. no. The, uh, humans go the shortest route is usually. Is, yeah. It's just generally how it is. Like, well, you're not prohibiting it and I can bang her. So I'll just not pull out this time or whatever. I don't. You know what I mean? You're an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, we'll, we'll clip that one out. But yeah, right? Does that make sense? In, in yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense. So we're approaching two hours again. What, do you, what else you got over there? That's pretty much it. I was just looking at, uh, there was this website, uh, the Muslim Times, Cousin Marriage is a Fair and Balanced View. And Is it truly fair I, and balanced? I, well, I'm, I can't. No, nothing. Look. The no <laughs> Nothing is fair and balanced. So when it Every, says it, when anything says it's fair and balanced, it's definitely not. Well, that's de I mean, it's like trust me. <laughs> Let's be honest. Can I be honest with you? Yeah, Doctor Dot, no, I'm going to no, be lying. Lie. Yeah. The next sentence is going to be a lie. Hi, I'm going to lie. Can I just lie directly to your face this time? Thank you. I'm so much easier. Let's someone says, "Can I be honest with you?" So you've been lying the entire yeah. other part of our relationship. Let's skip the middleman. Thanks for our awesome friendship, Dick. Thank you. And that's what it is. So we come across this and fair and balanced. There's not everyone has an agenda. You and I do have a deep buried agenda. It just happens to be, it does correlate with the human bastardization of one's personal uh, relationship with that higher power. If they have that, right? That's what religions are. We kind of have an, a deep seated issue. Yeah, I mean, you could call it an agenda in a weird way, but but we're not wrong with it. You know, does that make sense? Like, we're not yes. wrong to have the yes. agenda, but it doesn't change the fact that we have it. Yes. Right? Like, Al Gore and his climate change. You know, like, 
he, he just because he had it and propagated or whatever made the movie doesn't yeah. mean it wasn't happening. Right. It was going to happen either way. Right. It doesn't mean it was. Hit. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so it's kind of like that to that. Point, yes. Right. So anyway. can you send me that article, please? This one? Yeah. After this. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, maybe I'll put on the liner notes or something. Sure. Well. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if I can yeah. copy and paste. Um, I'm trying to read it all. It's, it's just a lot. And they, the numbers that, that this thing is showing is like it's point it's two and a hundred change or something, but that's not the numbers I'm seeing. And I know genetics. If you share, <laughs> if you share a recessive gene, it is a one in four. I, at same thing for, I hope it's correct term still dwarfism. I hope that's what it's yeah, called. We're still. not meant to, we're not trying to offend. Right. Once again, I don't know. I believe it's dwarfism is the correct term, but that I believe if two little people, people of little descent, I would, the fuck do you say now? Little people. Uh, people that are little. Because isn't it now like people of color? It's people that are smaller? I don't, do that. I don't know. I apologize. I apologize. But dwarfism runs genetically same thing. Same. So it's 25. Right. It's that same 25%, 50% this way, 25% this way, blah, 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 blah. Where'd blah, blah. you go? Where'd you go? I went this way. He went that way. So um, I think we covered it. I think we spoke pretty well about it. I, I have hope. two final points. Oh, please, sir. Get me out of this. So I, I sent the documentary to uh, several friends that are uh, very religious people, and I wanted their take on this. So one um, buddy of mine got back to me, and this was his response. And I asked if I could quote him on this. So I'm quoting a friend of mine, okay? And I apologize if this is a little rough <clears throat> and so i quote and we're not going to dox him by no the way. I, I, and i asked him if i could use his name and i and i won't but and i said can i quote you he said yes here we go quote this is genocide without question it would appear whomever infiltrated this in the uk way back when, is tackling the Pakistanis in a couple different directions. One, allowing inbreeding, which is a proven fact, to create life with natural-born pre-existing conditions, which can lead to death or incapable of functioning in society. Two, destroying the families that already exist within, questioning their existence, causing unnatural confusion, telling them that it's okay to kiss your cousin. Three, since Pakistani cousins are seeing what's happening within, newlyweds are probably not having babies. So that's that end quote. That's an interesting point. Are they are newlyweds no longer having babies? I don't know. So this is the last thing he said, um, which is we need to get him a tinfoil hat and have him on here because this is an amazing comment. I don't necessarily agree with it. This is his opinion only. I don't I do not endorse it. The last comment is a perfect way to get rid of a growing Pakistani population in the UK. So that's kind of a conspiracy theory, kind of like did the Chinese make COVID and release it on their own people or on, did the COVID get released by the Chinese in the U S same kind of idea. I mean, that's if that's a horrible thought, obviously humans have done the worst things through the dawn of time and it's borderline conspiracy theory, but, I'm going to say it's it ha right now without any further research it's a bit of a stretch and I'm I would gonna, agree the reason I say this and I and I I have to only disagree with the comment please please only on its face because of the lack of information we have right now yeah we need to vet this yeah but I who said it's a growing population who said it's growing we don't know right we, we don't like, know what right. so you know what I'm saying so who no one it, I have not heard a single statement about the Pakistani or an infestation right. that they're running rampant and and just infecting we, the we colonies. We don't know that statistic. No, they're saying that in this one community of the Pakistani that are married, 75% are to their first cousin. That is a fact. The other one is 50%. They're saying of the Pakistani, they're not saying Pakistani or a growing like number cockroaches just right. multiplying like rabbits. They're right. not saying that. Right. Maybe, maybe there is an underlying. That's why we always talk about this. 
once again, you and I, grain of salt, right? We don't know that information. We watch the documentary. Yeah. It could be 100% agenda driven. It is agenda driven. It's stating, in my opinion, correct genetic truths that first cousin children have a very high likelihood of having genetic defects that cost everyone their time, money, life, pain, suffering. It's child abuse even before the child's born. It's child abuse, in my opinion. That's the, And uh, the data that they, or data that they shared, points to that. That said, it definitely has an agenda. We have, we, you know, I'm open to seeing another side. If someone can present empirical data that, or data, <laughs> that's sci- of a scientific nature, right? Yeah. Like, not some meme that Spock says, you know, first cousin marriages are cool. Yeah. Nanu, nanu, or whatever the fuck. Live long and prosper, whatever. Yeah, all that. Live long and prosper with your first cousin. Right. Like, I, I don't know. Whatever. Star Trek. Yeah, I'm not going to see that. He Because he was a science officer. Right. That. Sure. Anyway, um, I don't know, man. That's about all I got. I have one final point. Yes. And I, I saved it for the end because I was really I was really moved and touched by, by this one. It's a very, very brief clip of an an older woman, a Pakistani, and she said that the 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 first cousin marriages in the community has to be addressed because it's having negative impacts on the youth. And the look of concern on her face that she she knew she looked like a she was 60 63 ish something in there but she knew that it was she she knew it was a problem you could just see it and she, you she could you could see the suffering and it, so she to me that that shows that there's hope even in the elderly community elderly i'm using that word loosely in the older folks that that, that she can see that times are changing and this is not the right thing to do because of the things that are happening. And I was, I thought that was a really positive way to look at it and a positive way to, to put a bow tie on it. What I took from that was even more powerful emotionally. Yes. The grandmother is a nurturer, a raiser, had children and then had children's children or yeah. raised if anyone can see the negative impact that children are having from this, it would be her. Absolutely. Yeah. She has a front row seat. Yeah. Cause she was a mother and then as a grandmother. Yeah. Raised. I mean, you know, that's still a lot of family community type things where they raise a family mm-hmm. together and whatnot. Yeah. So, um, she would be the first line of def- the one to see the problem in the first place. So it's even more powerful because it's the matriarch, literally the matriarch of the family. Of the grandmother is the matriarch. Great grandmother is kind of over the hill usually. Grandmother is always more the matriarch, yes. right? That role, like as, as sitting in that role, she sees how it's negatively affecting. Of course, like, that is so telling to me. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. She doesn't have scientific data. She just knows. Correct. They're off. Correct. She knows that something's off. Yep. Correct. Whether it's, you know, blindness or other, some are minor, some are much min- more minor, but they're still defects, yeah, right? Genetic right. disorders. But if you see that the something's disorders off. are running rampant, right? that's a red flashing warning sign. How many, we've all walked by someone who denies who they are, who they truly are, and we know who they are. We go, we know that's, that. That person is whatever, and that person, and they haven't acknowledged it themselves yet. Kinda. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we're just like, it's totally cool. It's not, it's not an issue. We just know it, right? We just know. And that's what the grandmother, she senses it's off. It's off, off in not in a non judgmental way. Right. It's diff, it's not what she's used to the experience being. And she wants things to get better. Right. She wants it to be back to the way she experienced the children before. Of course. Which yeah. which seems to be healthier, obviously. What I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be as completely peeled back from judgment as possible, right? Like, she sees the difference in the children. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say positive or negative because that's a judgment. But she sees a difference. She sees it as negative, though. Right? Yeah. Because she said negative impact. Correct. And it, it's, it's just... 
it hurts your heart. Absolutely. So, I mean, I wish them all the best. I, I, you know, I feel, I feel really bad. And I got choked up towards the end seeing that 14 year old, that 18 year old kid who acts like he's 14 with the glasses and that, that 17 year old boy just suffering and they have such a hard life. And that's just, it really sucks. It really sucks for the innocent. You know, I know I've said that word three times now, but that's what they are. They, They don't know any better. They're, they're completely not at fault. And they're Absolutely. the ones who are suffering. And that's really, really sad. There's no other way to say it. It is really sad. I hope they're going to be okay. You know, I really do. Yeah. I know what you mean. Well, that was another uh, little heavier one. A little today. bit. We had a little fun with it. We though. did I mean, some heavy did, lifting, bro. We did some heavy lifting. Teddy Brochev. Good, Good job. Thank you for coming again. And thank you f- once again for both of the podcasts. Because, like... I don't want to talk about heavy shit alone and I don't want to laugh alone. So thanks for, you're welcome. Thanks and thank for you driving at times, taking the wheel and, so, and for, and for navigating at other times and all, changing radio and being in control of the radio station. At yeah, all times. Rio. This has been another knock to conscious. Once again, we were talking about um, first cousin marriages, which lead to children, uh, which have very high, high, uh, Chances of genetic, rare genetic disorders, defects, things like that. Birth Are you going to be posting some of those disorders. links? I am. Okay. I will be posting as much as I can. I'm going to post the video. Okay. And then any of these searches that I did, I'll just put them up there. I haven't looked at all of them, but you or know, parts look, of all look of for them. yourself. Yeah, I, I absolutely. And that's what I encourage every, all the listeners read up on it, you know, see, see for yourself. Look, you know, are we totally full of shit? As I said on the Catholic podcast, read for yourself and, and see see where you can make a difference and, and see where, I know this is in the UK, but we've got a couple listeners there. So, look, yes, it's a cultural thing. Yes, people can say that it's a religious thing. And I see why people would say that. But read, educate yourself. Knowledge is power. And, and the more you know, the better. That's just That's just the way it is. May I close it with one thing I could say? Absolutely, sir. I am 100% certain that it is not a sin to not marry your first cousin. Yes, sir. So right there with this other heavy, strong evidence and data, science, genetics, all that, you know, it's, it's not like it's against God's will to do so. Correct. So just don't do it. Yeah. It's not. Right. I'm not trying to simplify it and, and belittle anyone's faith, but it's not against God to not marry your first cousin. Correct. It's very traditional and it make it makes, you know, communal sense to an extent. It makes a lot of sense in a lot of different ways, except for the one way that really matters is propagation of your people, your species, your culture, your heritage, your all that it will get lost. It will get lost. You ha- Pakistani people have a rich culture. You don't want to lose that. Absolutely. Wait, nobody wants to lose that. Legacy is really the only thing that a people's have. True. So, you know, it's not against God to not do it. So, um, don't, you know, don't do it. Maybe. Um, Twitter yes. world. What do you think? Tell us what you think. And please, if you if you listen to any podcast of ours, any, I know I'm sounding like a beggy fucking used car salesman right you now. You want to handle it? You want yeah, please. Yeah. You got it. Hello, Twitter world. I don't do it very good. No, subscribe, just do it. rate, download. We would love some stars, maybe five. Leave some comments. From everyone, not all the all the stars. Not five one stars. We all the five. five stars from all the people and rate and leave comments and download and subscribe. We would love it. We would greatly appreciate it. No banking. Get off your knees, bro. Um, that's for something else hey after this. <laughs> Who says we're not doing a no beer, touching? Beer, I'm not uh, even Korean. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to marry that Korean dude. Yeah, is Joffrey. Me- is Megsy going to break up with me after? No, she, knows she loves gonna, Korean oh, dudes because he cooks and cleans. I'm going to. He does. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I get nothing. I didn't know that. That sounds like I just a great made thing. that up, dude. All right, Twitter world. Well, thanks so much for uh, listening to us again. 
please subscribe, rate, review us. We, we, we're trying to make a difference. I will say this. The numbers are growing for sure. Like it is, it is slow. It's that slow ember burn. Please help us. Thank you for helping us get there and please help us get a little better. Share and retweet. Yeah. All that good stuff. Yeah. Tweet yourself. Tweet yourself. Yo. What was that? I, I don't, I don't know. I, that, I think, <laughs> you know what I think it was off of? What it was, was off of Parks and Rec. Treat yourself. Uh, Remember treat yourself? I said tweet yourself. Okay. Okay. That I'll, was stupid. I'll approve that. It thing. was Retta and Aziz Ansari. I will, I will, right. I will, I will allow it. Oh, thank you so much. Have you, uh, are you ready for the South Park pandemic at one hour episode special? N- what? Comedy Central, September 30th, sir. Oh, yeah. September 30th, Comedy Central. I'm excited. One hour pandemic special, I'm sir. So excited. They're calling about the pandemic. Pandemic. <laughs> I think uh, that's uh, Car- Kyle, well, the one who bought the Corvette's wife, the guy who bought the Prius's wife. She said pan- S- pandemic or something. It's Stan's mom? I don't know them as well as you, unfortunately. Okay. It's been like forever since I've seen it, but thank you again for listening. We love you. We're going to have another Beer Googles after this. Yeah. And we're going to get the heck out of here. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. Adios.